All right. Good morning, everybody. We're here in 2024 with the first live streamed games of Scrabble. What an honor as I'm joined by my co-commentator, Robin Pollock Daniel, with the first games of 2024 and the last four games of the Albany New Year's tournament, um, the majority of which was back in the previous year. And Robin, I am so excited to see how this event concludes today. I could barely sleep and I don't know if it was all the butter I ate last night or if it was simply because I was excited <laughs> about what's going on, but I had a gander at all of the standings as I'm sure we all have. And um, it's always nice when somebody has a breakout tournament and just blows the field away, but it's even nicer uh, for us to have some tension and to uh, be able to um, commentate on games where so much is on the line, where every little nuance has great meaning. We don't have to keep going, well, it doesn't really matter because he's already won the tournament, you know, like that type of thing. So I'm just super, super glad that we have an exciting day ahead of us. Yeah, with Scrabble, you never know what you're going to get. Are you going to get a game that is completely lopsided in terms of the tiles on one person's favor being incredibly strong, but also that same factor can show itself over the whole tournament. Somebody can just draw so well that they run away with it. Not the case for us here today. So we are going to do our best to bring the audience, you all in the audience, the games that have the highest impact regardless of the division and the lexicon. Well, I would say we're in the top division of our North American and Collins lexicons, but we're going to be switching a little bit. And our first game of the day, uh, I would be hard pressed to find a more exciting matchup between Matthew O'Connor and Adam Logan, Robin, two players oh that I'm God. sure we both know quite well. I'm actually learning about it in real time because I think Will got some insider information before I did as he's hosting today. And that just makes my little goose bumpies go all over the place because uh, Matt O'Connor, as we all, um, what did somebody say? I, uh, um, Art Moore wrote today in Facebook. I wouldn't, uh, I, something about OCD because looking at the racks of Matt and <laughs> yes. <Ben Schundred, laughs> that it's kind of a trigger <laughs> because they place their tiles, they literally throw them on there as if they were magnets. And no matter what the orientation, it doesn't matter. It stays there. They don't put them in alphabetical order. So that so you have the contrast of Matt of uh, uh, Matthew O'Connor, who just like just this brilliant mind who could just synthesize any kind of configuration in his brain. Um, and so it forces us to kind of understand his rack in that kind of jumbled way. Uh, and then you have um, Adam, who's very, you know, Dr. Adam Logan, who's very organized and the, you know, the, the mathematician who is very methodical. And um, so it's a beautiful contrast and they're both brilliant players. So what I'm listen, listen, you think I'm joking? I'm literally tingling thinking about these two guys. Yep. As a Scrabble fan, it's hard to hard to come up with a better matchup to start 2024 and to start our coverage today. I think the players are ready to roll here. Okay. At the table, <laughs> and let's see it. Um, so Matthew going first against Adam, and yeah, as you said, Robin, these two players a little bit contrasting styles of. You're going to see the tiles every which way on Matthew's rack, whereas Adam much more orderly, as you described. But I do think these two players actually share a lot in terms of processing speed and just general um, quickness in their ability to process the board and find their top options. If anything, I would say that Adam is, certainly his record speaks for itself. He is an incredible, you know, one of the top players in the world that is no hyperbole. And his resume, Robin, as a Canadian player is, is pretty peerless. Listen, I remember when Adam started, I think he was about 13 years old when he came into the Montreal Club for the first time. So to see him sitting here with, I think a little, is there a little hint of gray coming through? I think there might be a little bit, uh, you know, it's it's kind of mind blowing that he's uh, probably, he's a man in his, uh, I guess he's in his forties at this point, uh, if not a little later. So uh, we've seen him uh, just load the club with his brilliance at a very young age. 
and he's never let up. He's not one of these people who ever had a, a quiet period or a, you know, I was busy with other stuff period. He's always been quietly brilliant um, and um, just, just a joy to watch and a joy to try to understand where his brain is going. Yeah, so um, a, an easier decision facing Matthew here, or maybe not, as we see him uh, pick up the, uh, he looks like he was about to play distant, which looked like a perfectly solid play to me, but now he's picking it up and playing something different. So it's no surprise, even with a seemingly quote unquote simple, I know for many people who may be recently into Scrabble, it's crazy to see how often players at this level play all of their letters for bingos. Um, but this seemingly simple turn where Matthew has so many different seven letter words he can play, even that caused him to sort of think a little bit about the nuances of a couple different options here between distant and datings and who knows what else. Well, what do you think about that? Distant, of course, doesn't take an S. Uh, it didn't uh, slot of vowel next to a double letter score he's instead chosen to play a word that does slot the i next to the double letter score what do you think about that will it's an interesting one i i certainly felt as soon as i saw distant hit the board that it made a great deal of sense to me for the reasons you just described in general um when you have that blank on your first rack and you're choosing between bingos of course it's always the case on the first move of the game you're trying to avoid placing the vowels next to the double letter scores in case your opponent has let's say in this case a q or an x those scores would be magnified quite a bit by the i where datings was placed and distant would have avoided that but another thing that you try to do at least for me is i'm trying to make my blank one of the letters that is already being played so distant would require the blank to be a t there already is a t in the word you would be really unhappy in matthew's shoes if adam happened to have a word that played through a g and only a g that would now play exactly. right so a, a exactly. word that, I mean that plays through a t is already playing so yeah sorry go ahead robin no, I just no, I'm just agreeing with you. Like like uh, to me distant was, you know, dang near perfect. I'm it did assuming, everything you said it does. Yeah, I'm I know that Matthew has a rationale for this and frankly he's probably going to message it to me after this game. Uh no. Okay, him. I'm going to so, Yeah, I well, want to hear it. I think yeah. it's possible that maybe his, his gods, you know, told him he's about to pick up a QI. Like I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe it, it could be, and, and they're really, it could be things, and I'm sorry, I'll update the score here um, just to give Matthew his points. Um, so it could be something as simple as, or, or I mean, simple is totally the wrong word. It could be something as nuanced as Adams played Matthew enough times that maybe matthew can pick up on body language from adam or something like that maybe he has some kind of secret tell on adam's behavior where he knows he doesn't have a q or an x or something to start the game i i would find that very far-fetched i think that's a yeah. very far-fetched rationale but maybe that's going to be what what he says here he just knew from adam's posture right in poker people do that you you pick up on body language and tells it's it's not so much done in Scrabble because it's so friggin' hard in Scrabble just to find your moves on most plays that factoring in your opponent's behavior is really only for the the most ambitious uh, players out there. But if anyone was going to do that, Matthew would be a good candidate. So you think he would have to wait as he put distant on the board, then he would have to evaluate Adam's body position that, oh, that, you know, that did something good for me so therefore he changed it he maybe only the only yeah okay. I, okay I don't put it I don't put it past him now now let, let me again just qualify and say that that is extremely far-fetched I highly doubt that that's what happened but I I just don't put anything past Matthew in terms of these little nuances all righty uh somebody did point out in the commentary and it's true um Matthew's rack is is in alphabetical order and standing up <laughs> <laughs> that is a rarity that is we should all cherish that while we have that as the case because um <laughs> it's not going to be that way for the rest of the game unless well, maybe need, it's a new year's resolution 
or maybe it's because of the respect he has for Adam and that he just can't be so slapdashy. I don't know. That's true. Um, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to know, but we'll see if this is a new new year, new Matthew, or if he's going to revert to his normal disheveled tile ways that we we're, we're accustomed to. So let's talk about his rack. Um, do you want like there, you know? There's a lot of possibilities in this rack. Or do you want to blow it up with something like vegetal um, to block the double double and clear the rack up and you know start kind of a new? Or do you want to play small? What What are you liking in here? Just it's veg, a tough one. Yeah, yeah, I I think the he's it looks like he's going to opt for kind of an intermediate option between that smaller idea of just veg for a a small score parallel to datings to the DNA of datings. Looks like he's gonna play one of our favorite uh, multi-spelling words. Um, this, I, I assume this is sort of Yiddish-ish word for, isn't this the thief word of which there's so it many? Is. That's exactly um, what it is. The gun, it's, it's pronounced like gunav. Right, so this feels good to me in the sense that there are so many open letters less now after matthew immediately plays that cue which he so cleverly <laughs> set up a spot so clever. with datings um but uh i think when adam was making his move there were so many nice letters of datings open that uh maybe it was worth keeping as as many letters as he could to uh, try and hit, for example, that S of datings with a bingo. We can see though that his draw did not cooperate. Yeah, I don't think this is a magical tournament for Adam so far. Sometimes I notice with some of the top players, uh, I, I used to notice it with David Weekend, Weekend all the time. It's just, you know how you just piss off two tiles and then all of a sudden you just pick the, the two tiles you need to bingo. And he would just always seem to do that. But this is not necessarily happening for Adam and certainly not happening for Josh Sokol this tournament who's uh they're, they're starting to uh pick like normal human beings <laughs> so, so but that so makes them more exciting for sure and you know this albany tournament has an incredibly rich long history dating back decades it was already when i got into the game it was one of the long-standing big regional tournaments in the circuit and I can say that it draws such strong groups of players from not even just the East Coast of the US and Canada, but from everywhere. People will come to play this tournament from all over the place, just knowing its reputation. And the offshoot of that is that every year, one or two or three really strong players just absolutely bite it in the standings. And I have been that player more times than I care to remember. As Adam looks like he, with too many consonants, he dumps off a few of them there that seemed like almost a forced move on his part. And this is just a reminder to people who are um, tuning in and wondering about LYM and NOG that we are playing with the CSW, the um, World Dictionary for this particular game. And we will be bringing you games from both dictionaries, I would assume today, trying to follow the energy about what should be um, broadcast to everybody based on uh, proximity to winning or not winning the tournament. So we're starting the game with these two incredibly strong players from the CSW division. Yeah, it, when in doubt, just take a look at that top bar on the center of your screen where you can see what round it is, and you'll see the lexicon listed after that. Um, so if ever you're confused, um, as Matthew looks like uh, off to the bathroom quickly after his play there, that is permitted. Um, the only issue with it is if Adam were to make his next move, he would be fully within his rights to hit Matthew's clock and his clock would start running as he goes to answer nature's call there. How do you feel about that? I, I, you know, when I'm at a tournament and someone does it to me, I think I unconsciously actually take more time to make my play so that I don't hit their clock while they're away, even though it's completely within the rules. Yeah, How do you feel I, about I tend to take pity. I, I just feel like I've been in that situation before and I always, think of it as such a nice sign of sportsmanship when I when my opponent hasn't made an effort to to, to push my clock down. So I do try to, to pay it forward. And um, that being yeah. said, you got to be careful here because Adam's clock is already at a significant deficit to Matthew. So he can't be too nice here. He needs to make a move because Matthew 
is one of the faster players on the scene. He processes positions so quickly, as we were saying in the in the build up to the game. And uh, Adam, I would add, is regarded as one of the best blitz Scrabble players, basically speed Scrabble players in the world. But I have been interested to see that he's playing at a much more deliberate pace in the stream games that I've watched, Robin. Have you noted at all yeah. that Adam has kind of become more careful, more deliberate over time? Yeah, I have. And I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to... I, I, I mean, all I can do is speculate uh, because I haven't asked him the question. But um, I think it might be a function also of aging as well, just not being, uh, you know, um, not being as cocky as you get older you just you just realize how much can go wrong and also just as you get older you just um uh, uh you just take your time a bit more like what's the rush you know like i have plenty of time i don't need to have 11 minutes on my clock at the end of the game let's do this correctly it could also be evidence of the fact that he's not as sure as he used to be and he's just you know um uh, just trying to be a bit more careful. I mean, there, there could be lots of reasons for it, or it could just be a function. I mean, how ha have his racks been? Have they been, um, have they been more difficult this tournament? And therefore there's a lot more to think about. It's not as obvious what to play. Yeah, really good points. You never know. Some some games, you, you get series of games where everything just flows, and a player at Adam's level is likely to see the top moves and basically instinctively know that those moves are right. optimal, and some games are just brutal. And frankly, at least to start this game, his moves have not been obvious. As we noted, that first play of Ganef, that could easily have been a slightly shorter play, a longer play. He had to evaluate a bunch of very similar options. And so too with his last couple of plays as he eventually settled on Femme, which scores decently well given how closed the board is here. Not a lot of scoring opportunities. You can just feel how restricted the board is because all these, it's like this tiny cluster in the center of the board where all these letters are not really a free-flowing open board at least for now um and he had a bunch of different options to, to consider there too so um it could be a function of that but i do feel that even playing deliberately we saw it actually in a game yesterday where adam was playing with you know slower pace and it looks like matthew is about to get a bingo down which is going to change the complexion of the board but i think when adam needs to speed up speed up he can do it um at a moment's notice so maybe he has that uh satisfaction in his pocket and is this a valid word it's not a not it's not I, I'm only up to 19 in my Quackle um, dictionary, but I don't see it. So I don't know if it's an updated word, but it is not. It's with a K, it's good. Yeah, I don't. I think he's probably confusing this with the archaic nerdier, which is a Collins only word. I am astonished to see Adam doesn't, it doesn't look like he's even blinked twice at it. Um, and so that would that would jibe with my analysis that maybe as he's you know gotten older he's just not as cocksure about stuff the way he used to be. Oh um, yeah. So so the thing the thing I would say in perfect honesty the the moment at that Matthew played this it it passed my sort of smell test. I was I basically said to myself, "Oh yeah, it looks pretty good." And only after like a moment's thought did I realize, "Wait a second." You know, is that a word? It looks like several other valid words, whether it be nerlier with a K in front of that N, that's right. valid. Nerlier with an I in place of the U, that's valid. Nerdier with a D in place of the L, all valid words. So it looks very much like valid words. And that it just could have been one of these words that kind of slips into your brain <laughs> without a question. And that seems to be, a, I mean, frankly, a big missed opportunity for Adam here. Well, considering that there's only a five point, you know, deduction, if you're wrong and you don't lose your turn, the fact that he didn't hold, the fact that he didn't challenge tells you that he is quite sure that this is an acceptable word. 
that's rare. I mean, we, that this is really the equivalent of like a Scrabble lightning strike here to see a pretty high probability. And what we mean by that term is just a, a word that has all one point tiles. You're likely to see words like that more frequently in Scrabble because those one point tiles are more often in the set. There's just a higher number of them. And uh, Adam plays print for 16. Which gives, yeah, which gives Matthew Toreador. Which oh I can't my imagine gosh. him is. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he, is he had odorate, I think, as well. Uh, Colin's word that plays with hooks, um, any, tum, and er. But I didn't even see that <laughs> he has a bingo <laughs> through the r of earlier too. So Matthew was sitting pretty with bingos in a couple different spots that were going to be very difficult for Adam to block. Um, I'm wondering print versus print. Oh, oh not, this oh. this appears see, to be playing, a, a playing, miss as the, well. Playing fast, you see, playing too fast. Now, odorate doesn't take anything, so and it looks like it should, right? It looks like it should take a D, even if it's adjectival, but it doesn't. So now, um, I mean, obviously, I don't think he's playing it in order to trap Adam into sticking something onto it. I think you would just play Toreador and take your points. For sure. Um, but I think this is an example of playing a little bit too fast. And also, you know, what might have happened with Adam, you know, your opponent goes away in the middle of the game. He leaves you there. You're sitting there. He comes back, picks up three tiles and bingos in one second. I mean, just the pissed off factor, you know, <laughs> like I know. I just yes. like. But, and I've off, I've sometimes missed challenging something because I've allowed my self to get upset with the phenomenon rather than pay attention to the actual word being played. There's no uh, question that Scrabble yeah. is kind of a test of not just in, you know, your practice and your study of words and the honing of strategy, but it is also a mental test for sure. Scrabble is a game that has a significant luck factor. That factor can rear its ugly head in extremely painful ways <laughs> at various junctures. And managing the, the negativity that that brings is a huge part of the game, as it is in any game with a luck component. And uh, there's no question that you, you can tell sometimes when players are struggling with that sort of thing. It doesn't, I haven't seen any outward sign that, that Adam is unhappy, nor have I seen, although I noticed in the chat that maybe some, somebody picked up on some sense that maybe he realizes that Nurlier might actually be invalid now, but I haven't seen that from his body language, Robin. Not sure if you have. Well, that's very typical of Adam, right? Like he's not, I mean, I think what I've noticed over the year is occasionally just like a, a hooding of the eyes, you know, a downcast of the eyes. I mean, you're not gonna see anything major from Adam, but he knows that by allowing a Nurlier you know, this man who just seem, can't seem to get a vowel now, I think, what are we, five turns in now, he's finally getting some vowels. Everything he's doing, like he's he he had to sit there while Matt went to the bathroom. Matt comes back and in three seconds puts down a bingo. Uh, a few seconds after the bingo goes down, if Heidi's correct and he made a face, um, you know, he realizes, oh my God, I just made a huge mistake. Then Matthew picks another bingo straight out of the bag. Adam still sitting there with six consonants on his rack for the fifth turn in a row, fourth turn in a row. Like all of this wears on you and wears on you. Um, and it, and, and you really have to have strong presence of mind and a good constitution emotionally in order to overcome it, to shake it off and to just move on and just go, it's still early in the game. But you look at the score now, he's 201 points behind. This is going to make this is going to be and he doesn't have a bingo on his rack right now so he knows that and he's also used up you know 13 and a half minutes so uh it's 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 not a good situation for for adam at all right now it's not and he i think to to the point we've been making that Scrabble is this test of <laughs> composure in addition to all the other sort of brain power based things that we've been discussing. I think the biggest test for Adam is going to be after this game when somebody tells him or somebody looks up the word earlier and we discover that that word is not in the dictionary. That's going to be the big test for Adam to see if is that going to knock him off his game 
in the next round and the round after that yeah. because uh, that is yeah. that is a tough realization when you realize at a pivotal part of this game you could have swung things heavily back in your favor um you're but you're, i mean i agree with you that adam is yeah. extremely difficult to you know rattle over the long term maybe the most you're going to get out of him is a reaction after one or two moves here and there in a game he's not likely to bring that with him into another into the next no round. yeah knowing adam the way i do it's just like he'll just shrug his shoulders and you know you know, what are you going to do? And, you know, uh, he might have a private, you know, he's such a private man, right? We really don't know too much about him. Um, when we take pictures at tournaments, uh, I've been to a lot of small tournaments with him, like, you know, uh, uh, U.S. versus Canada. Um, Matthew, uh, sorry, Adam is always the one who is on purpose, even though he's one of the tallest people there, hiding his head um, uh, so that he can't be seen um in the in the photo so he's not about to share with us what what's going to go what's how how much it affects him but from the way i know him he is just like he's just gonna like you know yeah i did it and just move on yeah and it really is one of those things that it's it's hard to chide yourself too hard for just because again like i said it looked pretty good to me when he first played it um it's it's maybe if he thought about it critically for a second it might be man the, the by the way some of the plays that are wow being made here <laughs> are, are pretty nice um so going all the way back to brace for matthew i think he had an interesting option there of jerboa with his j he played brace instead but jerboa would have gotten rid of the j and scored extremely well there brace is fine but uh matthew with the j in hand you see him playing it now and he's burning his blank. I'm sure that's going to be a T or an L, actually. It's probably an L. Um, I would make it an L. So to, there's avoid, no to avoid hooking, right. Yeah. But he, but um, Matthew, actually, on his previous turn, he had J plays in that spot. But he elected to play Gross up there to the Z just to make absolutely sure that he was blocking that scary Z. No need to allow Adam to triple, triple through it. Adam responded with the beautiful woof for an enormous score, 62 points, setting up his S, and then Matthew goes back and takes care of that J spot that he left open. So really, really nice plays by both players. Just want to, and not a yeah. nice draw for Matthew here. <laughs> well, he's getting all the vowels that Adam, Adam wish he had. Uh, when he played Brace, and besides the beautiful Jerboa that you mentioned, Will, he also just had the simple jab, jaw, eight, and bet. Uh, by playing Brace, he scored his 50 points and he kept the J to stick on top of the ET to double both ways on, and he saved Jog uh, on his next turn. So, uh, you know, when you have a plethora of 50 point plus choices for your game, um, you are having a good game. <laughs> There's no, no question. question. Yeah, absolutely. There's no question. Um, really, the only thing that I would look at from Adam's POV is if he challenges that word. It's a totally different game. It's but totally given, different. given that he did not, it is clear that Matthew has had kind of an abundance of, it seems like every turn, he's had a number of really nice options to pick from. And that, as you say, Robin, is definitely a sign that things are going well for you in any given game. And what do you think of his, uh, once we're asking about Adam's uh, reaction to uh, not challenging earlier. What do you think when Ad uh, Matthew realizes he missed Toreador? How do you think he'll deal with that? He will not be happy about that for sure, but I think he, akin to Adam, is likely to kind of shrug his shoulders and say, whoops, you know, oh well, let's move on to the next move. Um, I don't think either of these players are apt to take that with them. I, did, I think that is frankly, a weakness of mine. Uh, I feel like I bring mistakes like that with me a little bit too far sometimes. So it's not that easy. And what a leave for Matthew here after this play. Uh, it, well, listen, it was either pass, but if you're giving an opportunity of, I mean, he's at the point of, of 20, 5, 6, 7, 8, 24 points, you're going to take it. And the reality is this is not a tight game. If he was just up by 30, 40 points, he absolutely, I would think, w would either play somewhere else uh, to try to block up the board, maybe block the S, you know, play off just S-E-E -E or just something not to allow Adam to come back. But he has absolutely no incentive not to open up the board because there simply isn't enough time and tiles left for Adam to come back. Yeah, the score is just so far out of reach. 
to make matters worse, Adam has a seven letter word on his yeah, rack adipose. potentially that does not fit anywhere on this board. It's just been that type of game for Adam, unfortunately. Well, in but, fact, Nuke blocked it, right? Off print. He had Adam. Oh, that's right. Sprint. That's a good point. That's surely part of the reason behind playing Nuke is that it does restrict the ability to play something ending in S hooking onto print with Sprint. So, I mean, I guess it does offer a pretty nice letter, actually two, in the form of the E and N to play eight letter words through. You could just as easily see Adam be excited by an E or N to play an eight letter bingo, but of course it was the S bingo that he had, which got blocked there. Again, just that kind of type of game for him. You know, Steve Grubb had a, a really nice suggestion if he didn't want to open the board was to play Eon and Grosh and um, and that's a really, really pretty oh, play. Very nice. But the reality is with so many vowels left, to, almost to some extent, Nuke, um, it doesn't it blocks the s hook for sprint and with so many vowels left matthew could rightly uh, ascertain that adam probably has a lot of vowels on his rack so he's forcing him to play pretty much through the n and nothing else but blocks any sevens to the print so you know there's more to that nuke play for sure um yeah very true good Good points there. And Matthew did draw decently to his four E's. He was able to pluck two consonants from the bag. Um, though it's not really at this point, he just needs to make sure he's playing valid moves from here on out. Um, it is worth noting that when, when all the players are jumbled up together in the standings, one key factor you can see with the records and then that number after underneath their little name plates there you see a number after the record that is their cumulative margin of victory and both players are going to be looking to manipulate that as best they can matthew is going to win this game but he wants to win it by as many points as he can and adam wants to lose it by as few points as he can so there's still uh, a reason to care for both players Right, so we see that Adam um, has 13-15 versus Matthew's 10-40. Uh, so we're talking, uh, you know, almost uh, 200 points, and that could be wiped out easily in one game. And I, it's and it's pretty much going to be doing that in this. But Adam has two games over Matthew, so he still has some breathing room. He's currently in second place to Jason Keller's 15-4, Josh Castellano's 13-6, and uh, Matt is 12-7, along with Jason Burzma's, along with Jason Ubica. So these, uh, obviously the people who are 12-7 and seven have to win every single game in order to win this tournament. And um, uh, Matthew is now well on his way to accomplishing that by winning the first game. Absolutely. Um, it is, you know, some of these other matchups, because Adam is on the, on the, precipice of losing this game he's going to be hopeful for some of those other matchups to go his way in particular jason keller who is the top dog right now in the standings but if jason were to drop that game adam's winning chances are still excellent he would still firmly control his destiny even after this tough game to start the day and to start the year even so it's uh, we got to get those jokes in while we can robin with the you know <laughs> Uh, the top the top score of the year by Matthew O'Connor. Uh, well, four eighty ain't gonna do it, but yeah, I know what you. Especially with this rack, he's not going anywhere. But. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, Adam has a pretty you know balanced variety rack. Not really too much that um, uh, Matthew can do, and this is the kind of um, disaster rack that if you're in a close game, that if you pick at the end of the game, and there's really like absolutely nothing, nothing you can do to score any points. And you just watch any lead that you might have accrued just dissipate as your player, as your opponent plays off, you know, here's the X and EX and OX for Adam if he wants you to extend the game and score points, which is ideal when you're behind. You wanna play slowly and you wanna score a lot each turn. So Matthew, when you build up such a great lead so early on and insurmountable lead, these kind of terrible racks in the end game are just minor you know, annoyances rather than disasters leading to a loss of the game that you had well in hand. Yeah, this is a good time for Matthew to have a rack like this with three E's and three I's on it. And in fact, from Adam's POV, 
he if he's caring still and looking at the unplayed tiles which i fully expect him to be doing um i think it's it would be only human in a blowout loss for many players to kind of stop paying attention to that but i highly highly doubt that Adam ever stops paying attention to the unseen tiles. He's just that we've been talking about his sort of composure and, and, and makeup, his mental makeup. Um, but I'm sure he can look into the remaining tiles and reason that there's actually a decent chance that Matthew has a rack very similar to what he has. There's four I's and three E's unseen to Adam this late. Um, I don't know what impact that's going to make on his decision-making. I think the biggest thing that he's likely to try and do is to play the eye on his rack. Um, so there are plenty of X plays that Adam can make here, but not that many of them use up the eye on his rack, which he's going to really be trying to do seeing so many, so many of them, excuse me, lurking in the unseen tiles here. Sure. There's five left in the bag. And, you know, for all he knows, there could be uh, three eyes in that bag. He has no idea that that Matthew has none of them. Uh, another thing he could be doing is trying to create an unblockable, brilliant spot for himself in order to maximize that X. And so very impressive that uh, just in terms of body language, one thing I have noticed that Adam um, unless he just doesn't have the correct shirt for it today, but he is notorious for kind of biting on his shirt neck <laughs> when he is thinking deeply. And I notice he's not doing that right now. Um, so, you know, give him kudos. Like he's got two and a half minutes left. Uh, he knows that, uh, yeah, he's getting rid of that eye. He knows that he can't win this game. And he's still taking his time in order to score as much as he can. Um, and not just, uh, you know, throw the game away like I've lost it. Let's just move on. I, I'm not interested in this anymore. So there's a good lesson to people out there. It, it, even if you've lost your game, play your game with integrity. Play with it to the best of your uh, knowledge. Everything's an opportunity. Just use it as an opportunity to learn and to grow. Um, and how can I make a, the best possible end game, even in a game that um, I have completely lost? And, and now he, you see he has a bingo on his rack. The question is, can he bingo? Um, Ide now has blocked that. Unfortunately. Yeah, okay. great block. That's a really nice block by Matthew. I have to imagine part of the rationale for that ID play that Matthew just made was to obstruct the sevens lane off of Soai on the right side of the board. And in this particular case, he has gotten there in the nick of time. So a really nice uh, block here by Matthew have to imagine he saw that possibility whether he saw out lead as as a you know word that he was specifically targeting or whether he was playing id just because he knew that that spot was the important one to address um, yeah either way good instincts by matthew yeah and he played it so quickly um it would be if he does if he does um text you afterwards. If you can ask him about Nurlier, ask him about Toreador and ask him about Ide. Having played it so quickly, was it just a matter of scoring points and getting rid of two vowels? Or what did he also consider uh, blocking that, uh, that, that row? Uh, it'd be interesting to know how, because he played it so quickly. I, I, I don't have any doubt that he has the capacity to, to make that determination that I should be blocking that row. But because he did it so quickly, I just want to know how fast his brain is. <laughs> because yeah. it really, yeah. It's fast, um, but is it that fast? We'll, we'll find out. Um, I fully expect the the O'Connor report to, to come in. I would also add that Matthew has a particular love of games where he plays a blank tile that is not a bingo, and he did achieve that in this game with Jural. Um, so that, I know, is one of Matthew's favorite things to do, playing the blank and not using it for a bingo. So nicely done. Another O'Connor checklist item uh, ticked off in this game as Matthew plays Dula, uh, sorry, Adam plays Dula. That looks like about as good of a play as he could muster here. Yeah, that's lovely. And you know, and you bring up a really good point and this is for um, not just for the new players out there but also for players who have been doing it for a long time. Um, we tend to think of blanks as uh, attached to bingos by the hip. Like you can't use the blank unless it is for a bingo. But what is a bingo? A bingo is simply, or a bonus when, when we're talking about CSW, it's simply an opportunity to score 50 more points, right? If you're um, managing to get 
bonus or bingo like scores without making a bingo in this case he what did he get 68 70 points for Jerome? 70 I, yeah 70. i mean how many times have we used a blank for 59 points right but it's a bingo so i'm allowed to use it so maybe stop thinking about the blank as something that you can only use for a bingo it's something to allow you to score a, a lot a lot of points yeah very well said um that is something where as you sort of make your way through the you know through your progression as an increasingly experienced player you have to sort of learn when to adjust i mean scrabble really in general is about learning these general rules of play and then learning when to break those rules there are so many little ideas that you have in scrabble you know you should never make a play that leaves ah. four four e's right that's a rule that we would often say well matthew did that in this game because it made sense to do so to break that rule so right. uh, what right. you allude to never using the blank unless it's a bingo yeah of course you don't want to you that is a smart rule in general but in this case matthew was absolutely correct to burn it so and adam finishes the game off and now let's see if we can read their body language well here. did you see did you see him pointing to earlier and adam like like as in I, I i have no question he was saying like oh, i screwed up on that that wasn't that wasn't good and adam just kind of shrugged and then he started pointing to all uh, you know his femme play maybe he was just like i'm you know stuck with a lot of consonants and i don't know if he if adam would ever say something like that to to kind of say woe is me i had bad racks but uh you could definitely see him point to earlier and adam uh, nodding very you know quickly and, and realizing that that was a mistake on both their parts yeah that's so i think we've all been in that situation here and there where your opponent plays a word against you and it looks so much like so many other words that are valid that you don't even question it until the light bulb goes off later in the game which is a terrible feeling because now you realize you've made a mistake and you have this negativity that you have to process as well so um but uh, adam is as we've been saying Adam is a great candidate to be pretty unperturbed by that going forward. And uh, we'll just have to see how some of the other results in the Collins division shook out. And Adam may still be in firm control of his own destiny. So. Well, I'll tell you, because I have it um, refreshing, thankfully, thanks to the bright people at Let's Play Scrabble.com. They're having the play the game um, standings uh, page repeat uh refresh and so i could tell you that our leader jason keller is uh has blown away well not blown away but he had a very comfortable 452 to 380 win over josh castellano so we're starting to see pairings where um what would i call a self-cleaning oven right the people who could can eliminate each other are doing that um if you tend to play players who are have no chance of winning the tournament then anybody can win and just keep going up but um uh, just like my beloved uh, Buffalo Bills and uh, Miami Dolphins are playing next week, and that will determine who wins the division. So it's an opportunity for the, you know, let the let the guys play it, let the, let the top players play it out and determine who should be the winner, and that's what's happening here. So Jason just beat Josh Castellano. Jason was at 15 and four. He's now at 16 and four, plus 993. Josh has now gone from 13, six to 13, seven. So he's one of these people who needed to win all four games in order to have a chance to win the tournament. So we can say now that Josh has not, does not have the ability. Do I, well, I think, does he have one more chance? Yes. A because... very, very low chance, but yeah, that, that loss does hurt him. Adam was in second place at 14.5. He's now at 14.6. So Josh, um, uh, J Jason kind of did him a favor by beating Josh, but he didn't do him a favor by winning because he's in first place. So uh, there was no good outcome for Adam in terms of Jason's uh, game. And Jason Burzma game is still pending as he plays number eight, Tim Weiss. So, yeah, I mean, when you get this late, we've already, just to set the stage a little bit, that was game 20 out of the total 23 game tournament that we are playing here at uh, the Albany New Year's tournament. When you're getting this late in the tournament, it's going to be all the top dogs uh, sort of <laughs> battling uh, for the you know supremacy here. And every round is going to feature a 
you know, half of those players advancing with a win, but then another half of those players falling back with a loss. So at each, each game, if you're able to win this late, you're going to get a lot of good news from the rest of the games that half of those people that you're fighting against lost their game as well. And it can even sort of soften the blow. If you're in Adam's shoes, half of those people did not run further away from you with a win. So unfortunately for him, it does look like Jason won his game, as you said, Robin, but I do think it sets up a pretty interesting scenario where Adam may be forced to take matters into his own hands and play Jason Keller a number of times going forward. We could be seeing that um, that situation developing in the Collins division, but we are for sure also, excuse me, keeping an eye on the NWL division as well. I fully expect that we're going to dive into some games there. So if you've been waiting for that, it's it's very likely coming at this I have, late I stage. Have oh, you, you got the bulletin there? Yes, I've, absolutely. Well, I, I've, I've refreshed the page. Um, so going into this, Max Panich was in first place, tied with Joey Malik, but ahead on spread by a good amount. Um, and both these gentlemen won. So Max just played, um, why can't I see? Oh, he played number nine, who is Peter Schwartzman, and he won 442 to 379, putting him up at 1127. Uh, Joey Malik just played James Donnelly, who we had the pleasure of watching yesterday, that young um, a school scrabble champ, and he beat him with a score of uh, 401 to 370. So that was a bit of a closer game. So uh, as they see on Jeopardy, neither fair nor, fair nor foul. Uh, both of them won their game. So they both continue in first place, 15 and five, but Joey is at 616. So he is 409, uh, 11 points behind in Q. Chloe Fatsis is, everybody is, I think on a, a bated breath to hear how Chloe's doing because we'd love to see her do very well this tournament, every tournament, but she's doing so well this one. Um, her result is still pending. She is playing Carl Higby, who we also saw on the uh, stream yesterday. Michael Fagan, who at some points, uh, various points during the tournament was in first place, has still acquitted himself very well. He's at 13 and seven. He won his last game against number seven, who is Christopher Sykes. So two Canadians played each other and he won that game uh, 462 to 383. And Peter Schwartzman, as we said, lost. James Donnelly lost. So these are all the people who are in contention. Jonathan Lynn has won, but he's only at 12 and 8, and there's only three more games to go. He, the most he can do is 15, and he would have to have Max and Joey lose every single game. And since they'll probably be playing each other at some point, that's not going to happen. So anybody at 12 now in that division has uh, no chance of winning this tournament. Yeah, Chloe's result is going to be a big one to see if she maintains solid winning chances in the NWL division. That game between Chloe and Carl, which let's hope for poor Carl's sake that that goes better than the previous game between those two, in which I believe that was the one where Chloe bingoed six times and scored 600 and a, you know, whatever, a ton of points against Carl. Um, but if Chloe is able to come away with another win in that game, it's going to create quite the log jam at the top of that division between Max Panich, Joey Malik, and Chloe, with some outside chances for our 2022 North American Scrabble champion, Michael Fagan. I think, um, you know, this not to pile on one of my best buds in the game, but I think if you're wondering how is our current champion, Josh Sokol, doing, it's not been his best tournament, but then again, he's had such an amazing year of play that even with a slightly subpar result at the Albany New Year's tournament, he has had one of the great years of Scrabble that I can remember. So it just goes to show you that nobody, no matter how good you are, is good enough to avoid a few clunkers now and then. So poor Josh is hanging back at eight and 11 right now and potentially if he does not win the game he's playing now he could be 8 and 12 amazing robin isn't it's kind of i don't know how we feel about the the fact that our best and brightest players can have tournaments like that well i was thinking as you were talking you know i was considering other sports analogies um do we have the same thing in sports like football or basketball or baseball where you have these brilliant players 
do they, you know, they have these maybe brilliant years and then the next year they have a lot of slumps. And I'm thinking, well, they don't have the luck component that we have in Scrabble, right? They don't have to stick their hand in a bag and get lucky that they pick good tiles. Yes, they're going to be playing against other players who have also maybe increased their skills over the year, but uh, it's there's not the same kind of a luck component. So uh, I, I think it's just a natural yin and yang of the universe. I mean, this is, you know, there's uh, energies neither created nor destroyed. There is balance. There's homeostasis is the basic one of the basic physics principles of our of our world. And so I think it's just the nature of life that there is you know, there's ebb and flow. There's there's highs and lows. And um, it's it's I, I, I can't explain it any other way because if it was just the luck component, then I could just say Josh is just having one of those tournaments. The same thing where Adam, you know, where he's just picking lots of consonants right in a row and he's not able to pull himself out of the ashes. Uh, but you see it in baseball, you see it in basketball and, and what, you know, like uh, uh, in hockey, you know, uh, on my Montreal Canadiens team, Holden Caulfield, you know, went, went 11 games without scoring a goal and he's our number one sniper. So like, you know, how do you explain it? So I think there's, what, what, what's your thoughts on that, Will? I have, I that's first of all, great observations and great thoughts. I definitely believe that um, there is a human element that in, in this that it just statistics do not always capture. So when things are going poorly in Scrabble, it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy that you're going to struggle, make decisions differently, lose focus. It's very difficult when things start to snowball in a negative direction to maintain your composure. And I do feel like that's the case in certain sports as well, like baseball players that and to your point of luck in baseball, I agree that it's a little easier to ascertain luck in Scrabble due to pulling the letters out of the bag, but there are definitely measures now where you can see that a player in baseball will hit the ball 100 miles an hour off of his bat with a certain angle off the bat such that you can say, oh, hitting a ball that fast and at that angle has a 98% chance of being a base hit and it was caught by the outfielder, right? Like right. that's kind of bad luck, right? You could hit a ball in a certain stadium that would be a home run in every other stadium, but it's a fly out where you hit it. You know, that's, that's bad luck too. So the trick when those things happen in any endeavor, whether it's baseball, basketball, scrabble, anything, the trick is, to not let them snowball out of control. Try to isolate them to that one negative occurrence and don't let it be accompanied by additional negativity that drives you further down. So um, that's that's kind of my, my thought. I do feel like that human element is so underrated when we're analyzing um, just the, the long-term performance and of players in tournaments. And and the important thing is that we're going to have, you have to, um, there's so much, uh, there's a reason why there are sports psychologists. There's a reason why um, uh, certain players uh, just have this ability to um, slough off bad luck or bad situation or an unfortunate situation or a poor ref call or whatever, and other people who simply cannot do it. And I think in Scrabble, you have to have, this is why it's such a beautiful game and any, any kind of competitive endeavor is, because it requires you to have discipline. Um, it I mean, for people who are watching on the stream, don't just look at the game understand the phenomenology of what you appreciate the phenomenology of what you're watching you're watching people under a lot of pressure who um, are not only looking to uh, do well personally but also not to embarrass themselves on the stream to try to win some money perhaps to offset the costs of the tournament uh, they might be having some issues going on in their lives and it's just the capacity to bring it all together uh, you know, to have a championship mindset. To me, like a true champ is able to overcome all of these things and then just slough it off and go on to the next game. So these are opportunities, just like in anything in life, when you have something that befalls you, something negative, an illness or an unfortunate thing or just bad, you know, just yesterday when we were making, I didn't want to be driving on New Year's Eve and lo and behold, we almost got sideswiped by a car going through a yellow light in the snow. And that would have been just really, really bad, you know, timing and luck and of course <laughs> yeah. you know it would be but, very bad 
but then I would, you know, uh, if I survived it, because it would have been on my side of the car, uh, you know, see it as an opportunity, see everything as an opportunity for growth rather than I'm a victim and uh, why is this happening to me? It's happening to you because you have something to learn from it. So if you adopt, I find if you adopt that kind of uh, an emotional mindset uh, for anything, you can overcome anything in life and you can use it as an opportunity for growth rather than as further self-victimization. Yeah, Scrabble can easily be seen as sort of a microcosmic little arena to practice those skills of mastering your environment and circumstances and doing the best you can with the hand you've been dealt, metaphorically speaking. And given that we've got two players, I believe we are actually ready to begin our next round here. And it's going to go back to the NWL division between two players that I think, Robin, are extremely good at uh, handling the ins and outs of the emotions of a game and staying very even keeled. Two players with uh, not quite championship pedigree in Joey's case, but Joey was the runner up in the finals um, of the North American championship this past year, finishing second overall. And Michael Fagan, of course, winning it the previous year. So quite the pedigree by both players here. Absolutely. And and Joey Malik is the proverbial always a bridesmaid, never a bride. Um, and one that uh, has deserved bride, bride status for, for decades now. Um, so and he has won his share of tournaments. I, I, he hasn't just won the big ones, I don't think. Um, I think his equanimity to um, slightly disagree with you, Will, uh, because I know Michael uh, personally. Um, I believe that Joey's equanimity is a little bit higher than Michael's. Uh, Michael, um, uh, I, I, although he's very lovely across the board and he's, uh, you know, and he's able to pull himself out of it. But uh, I believe that there's a bit more of a, you know, kind of a rep repetitive script that goes on in his mind um, during bad situations. How quickly he's able to slough it off, I'm not as sure. Um, but I don't think we're going to, you know, see anybody uh, throwing tiles or, or chairs this game, that's for sure. <laughs> that is true. Um, what I'm curious about is, is Michael going to try playing Waggy? I, and now he's, I'm wondering, well, is he going to play Goppy? So either of those, I would strongly expect Joey to challenge unless they happen to give him a bingo that he wouldn't have otherwise. That would be an interesting choice for Joey. I don't think Joey has a seven letter word on his rack, but if Michael plays a phony, for example, that gives him a G to play through, Joey might let it stay on the board and play Slayer through that, an appropriate holiday word given we just had Santa and all that going on. So well, he let's doesn't see. have a five letter word. So whatever he's he plays, about to try one, though, he's about to try one. So here's the situation. Let's try to read Joey's lips. I think he just said hold. So now so he we knows, have. He knows yeah. that it gives him a bingo. He knows it. Yeah. And this is what tricky. Do do? This is a it's tough one because the bingo that it gives him is not so, so, so powerful. Um, unless there's a better one that I'm not seeing, um, there would be a Collins one through that. A, it's not relevant in this game. That would probably tip the scales. <laughs> but the G, the Slayer bingo through either G here feels like it might be just enough to allow this to stay on the board well, and just play. What do you think? I would say if he played like WAG and only got, you know, four, five, six, 14 points, I would let it stand. But you're letting him get rid of really clunky tiles and score a ton. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah, he's challenging it. I, I, yeah. I, I, I personally wouldn't let it go. If he, he's scoring too much and, and cleaning up his rack, it's too much. Yeah, I think it makes sense for the reason you describe, Robin, to, of course, it's nice. Joey, on his next move after this phony, was going to score 60-odd points, something like 65 points, by playing Slayer at the same time by challenging the word off. Even if Joey doesn't score anywhere near as many points, he will force Michael to play through these terrible letters on his next turn, as, as you just said. So I do feel like maybe long-term challenging and setting Michael back further to have to deal with these clunky letters at least one more turn. Who knows? Maybe two if you make a sufficiently defensive play. I think oh, it, does, I would, it does make sense. I would sense. play EH in a second. <laughs> yeah, I think that's very likely to be what comes down to. 
I mean, yes, he can hit the double, you know, he can, he can hit the double, he can play higher E, uh, but it's very clear that Michael has a, a, a lot of consonants. There's no question about it. And there's absolutely no reason to give him anything to play through. He didn't play the P, so he doesn't know he has a P hook for EH, uh, but he's got a Y hook. So, um, you know, yeah, there we go. Do, would you agree with EH? Do you like that? I do. Yeah, for sure. I definitely do. It's, um, you know, you also have to, to imagine that uh, it's possible that Michael, from Joey's perspective, it's very possible that Michael's other two letters were such that maybe he has a similar play, uh, like a five letter play that is valid, that would still score in the 30 point range, but he wanted to play waggy because the W is the weakest of his consonants on his rack, right? He could easily have baggy or some other word like that ready to come down if Joey were to exchange or to make an easier place to score points. But EH does a tremendous job of uh, restricting things. I wonder if he's going to, because he has such good bingo tiles, he could opt to play HE, which would be a lot better for his S yeah. than, than EH would. So I yeah. could see that being being a reasonable choice as well. Right, 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 right. Um, the other problem with Waggy is that it sets up um, a phony S hook that neither might know. Ooh, L high. So a couple more points instead of just EH. It looks mm. like I'm mm. interested by that. It doesn't take an because, S. It doesn't take yeah, an S. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, he sure will, he's likely to be able to play if he draws a bingo ending in S. He'll likely still be able to play it forming ES under L high because I think Joey is knows that Michael is going to play through that eye. Well, he, as he's he going to give him, doing. he gave him Wiggy. So I'm not sure why he would do that, but Michael's not afraid to play this. So. <laughs> yeah, just maybe just, <laughs> maybe temporary um, concern that he doesn't have his W G G Y words, um, you know, set up. Maybe yeah. he thought that Wiggy was invalid and Waggy was valid. And now he's his confidence is shaken enough that he's going to make a slightly, uh, you know, dock his dock his play a little bit. Of course, you would love to get that W off. And now the he's going to outdraw him. He's going to outdraw him. <laughs> yeah, outdraw does find its way onto his rack, which uh, at least for uh. one turn anyway, we'll have to see whether that's a game long theme. But Joey is somewhat paying the price for using four tiles on that move of L high, as opposed to just two, which would have kept him a little bit closer to playing a bingo. And you can see he's drawn that UY combination that he immediately dumps there. Yeah, not playing, giving him that eye to play through, knowing he had Wiggy, um, I think was an error. Uh, it allowed Michael to get rid of four of those heavy consonants and score on the double letter. Um, uh, and if he had just played EH or HE, as you probably superiorly, superiorly suggested, uh, uh, Will, uh, he wouldn't have had uh, anything to play through, just that E, which would not have helped him at all. Yeah, tough, tough stretch. Interesting positions for sure for both players to consider, but it certainly looks like um, this positioning of outdraw it initially blocks that E that Joey might have been looking at to play direness, but it is for sure it is surely going to give Joey back a number of options to bingo in response here. So all is sure. far from lost for Joey Malik as the a very uh, cagey. Oh, oh even good. better, very nice, and look at how quickly he spotted this. That is extremely impressive by Joey Malik. It took him all of a tenth of a second to spot by far his best bingo here, Robin. Very impressive. Very impressive. Um, I, and I love it. I love it. I love that he, you know, maybe if he was kicking himself in the foot for giving him the eye and letting him play through it, uh, that he picked up this absolutely lovely rack that all of us would be suddenly, okay, there's no sevens, but what are the eights and going through it and then just slapping down weirdness right away to even have the presence of mind to um, uh, what can I play off a of WE? I mean, who does that, right? And that's great. That's just great. 
That's Joey in a nutshell. That's really impressive stuff on his part um, to spot that so fast. I can say almost for sure that I, if I saw that at all, it would not have happened instantaneously. I would have been slowly looking through all the letters of outdraw just to make absolutely sure that I wasn't missing anything. Then I would look at the why of guy, who knows what else, maybe. <laughs> Just maybe would I consider playing through the WE and hopefully would spot that, but it would surely not have happened the way Joey did. I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed too. And I'm always impressed with how Michael picks well. Uh, he's picked the other, <laughs> he's picked the other blank, uh, unfortunately with a bunch of other tiles, but they're scoring tiles. So if he's able to, um, I mean, BL is very synergistic. So I, I people, what, can I just ask you this, Will? Okay, what do you feel about the P versus the B? Which one are you more a fan of? Oh, in general, definitely the P. Um, I just think that it's a little bit better when you pair it with a whole bunch of sort of generic bingo tiles, but there's no question that there are scenarios where the B is going to outperform the P, and one of those is alongside that L because of the just the synergy between the B and the L, which actually goes far beyond just the able prefix. Um, those two letters have quite the affinity for each other. So when you have a B, it's really nice to see the L along with it. Um, that being said, it's possible that Michael is going to play something like blue forming by alongside the Y of piggy, just because, um, you know, it doesn't seem like there's that many other options that would be worth doing. Maybe he'll play, I don't know, wed or web or something like that. I guess that would break up the BL synergy as well, but, uh, yeah, maybe blue is the play here, but in general, the B does have its cases where it's going to outperform other similar tiles like the P and M. Yeah, I'm definitely a, P, a B over a P person. And when I play on Woogles, it's constantly telling me to keep P's and I's. And I'm thinking I'd rather have a B. Uh, I just find it easier to play with. And I would rather have two O's than two I's. So I'm always wondering about, you know, the thinking behind those um, recommendations. Well, so yeah, the the eyes thing is, is not just you, I'm sure. I think that's definitely uh, everybody struggles with the two eyes. If, if we're going to give any saving grace to two eyes, it's that as terrible as they are for shorter words and scoring plays and short words, you do actually see at least a, a fair number of longer words that do contain two eyes. It's not a death sentence for playing a bingo, um, but admittedly, I think it's a very, every Scrabble player of almost any experience level is not going to love to see those two eyes on the rack. So as we see Hefe for Joey here, um, that's interesting. He could have just played Ahi off of the, yeah. off of the Y of Guy, but he's opted to get rid of his two weakest bingo tiles in one go, probably because of the openness of the board and how good um, of a bingo board it is for eight letter words, especially with that S of weirdness in that lower middle part of the board there. Right. Um, ironically, he needs one of my favorite letters. Now we know P I love the B. He needs B for liftable. True. Uh, yeah. Not quite there. And the O of outdraw is also not quite in the right spot. Um, it's not, and that was my first bingo ever. Wow. <laughs> That's not an easy find, frankly. No. I mean, as, as a word, we are potentially familiar with that word, but I, for me, when I was just starting out in Scrabble, one of the hardest words for me to see was the very simple word scenario because oh, it yeah. starts with an S and ends with an O. So of course the word we're referring to here for Joey would be fellatio through the O of outdraw, but it's one, two, one space too high on the board and he's gonna have to look elsewhere. And I'd like to just commend you for not making any puns while making that discussion. And doing that would have really sucked on my part. <laughs> Okay, so um, he, Michael has two ends, and that would give Zoe flatline, but he would obviously have to play it um, through you know, off the Y in order to make it anywhere near that Joey could reach it, and that's I don't think going to happen. 
The question is, does he have something to the S? I don't see anything. So, yeah, I don't think Joey has anything. Um, well, it's actually, it's so it's Michael's turn now. Right, yeah. And, so I'm just, and, I'm imagining what is, is Michael even going to be able to play into that S productively? That it I feels don't, no, there's no bingo, crazy to think. imagine, but yeah, yeah, that's definitely his first spot that he's looking here with that blank is can well, i play something to the, the double triple? double right the oh first true 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 yeah. yes for sure that's true and also yes, you have n-o-n so we were talking about prefixes yesterday so when you have n-o-n on your rack try to put that in front so you would have like non-ideal for example uh if that was playable but I'm, I'm not seeing anything there i'm seeing noontide through the o which is a real uh nothing bingo and a bit dangerous yeah that's Oddly, there is very little, it, it appears, you know, using our um, <laughs> our privileged position here as the commentators, he doesn't even have a bingo that scores in the 70s here. His highest scoring bingo is unironed off of the U of outdraw, if I'm not mistaken, which is crazy. It feels like with such nice open letters to play through, not even just the S of weirdness and the D of outdraw, but maybe the Y of guy. But Michael is going to correctly um, pull the trigger on this bingo of noontide. And frankly, that's a really good job by him to not spend overly much time here. Yeah. And it's uh, just 64 points. What was on iron? You said 20, uh, was that 70? 68. So oh, not a huge, and, and this one is 66. So it's only two points off um, the, the best move. And yeah. who knows if there's positional considerations here. So you could, you can live with that as far as, uh, you know, he, he's well, gotten I think through that is much better. Unironed is much better because it blocks your S, the S bingo now. Oh, very true. Yes, that that makes a great deal of sense. Definitely want to get in the way of that S. Unironed starting with that U does that. Good point, Robin. Um, sorry, I missed that nuance, but you're clearly right in that regard. But still not the biggest error you could imagine here. And I'm just mostly surprised that there happens to not be anything better um, through these nice letters available. And also, would you have to get over in this you know, maybe I'm just like projecting the stuff that I go through in my head, but like knowing that it needs an N, your opponent plays two ends and you can't reach it to, to for a bingo. Like, <laughs> yes. You have to get over that. Oh, oh he's going to play a phone. Oh, oh very God. clever. So this, I assume, is trying to get at the word that is spelled with a ph in front flatly right that's a regular word i think oh my god really and oh he's, wow yeah i think he I, i'm not sure if so it looks like joey has gone ahead and played this and michael's clearly held the play because joey is not drawing his tiles very curious um to see if michael will challenge this word it does look kind of like a valid word with a ph but i'm not 100 percent sure if go. michael knows I'm that one either so yeah, nicely I, if, played I, I here told you i would have told you that michael is going to let it go yeah. um i find that his um his word knowledge is incomplete whose is so, but um unless he's just told him you can take your courtesy tiles but I find that he tends to make the decision based on um, his appreciation of the opponent's word knowledge rather than, yeah, so Got he's it. let it go. And he's also found his own criteria word. So oh, that yes, might have gone. True. Yeah, so that might have gone into his thinking as well. Uh, and that has happened with me against him as well, where I've actually played, I think I played Torquey without the E. That's right. That said, was an amazing play, by the way. Wasn't that, that an was... amazing phone? Yeah, that was really well done. <laughs> um, and he said, I let it go because I had my own 70 point bingo. And I just figured, you know, you might block it now and then I'd really be behind. So, I mean, he has shared with me his thinking, so I'm not pulling it out of the air. I'm not just interpreting it. Um, uh, so I'm not surprised that he didn't challenge Joey because he had his own bingo to come back. Yeah, so that's I mean, this is a big difference between the the lexicons not really lexicons it's just the the rules that we use 
in the different divisions, as it looks like Michael has picked doctrine to go down through that eye of philately <laughs> or philately. So that could be a bad news um, for Joey Malik if he doesn't inadvertently block it here, which he may. There's some options that do so. But uh, it just so happens that in the NWL division, we use a challenge rule that is slightly more punitive. If Michael were to have challenged that word and it were invalid, he would have lost his turn. Whereas if he challenges it and it, oh, sorry, other way around. If he were to challenge the word and it was valid, Michael would have lost his turn, which is a big, big penalty to pay compared to the Collins right. division where you're just giving your opponent an extra five points. That is not nearly as harsh a penalty for being wrong about a challenge in that position for Michael. So it makes sense why you really got to be sure to make those challenges. Um, but uh, we'll see how the rest of the game transpires because We've now seen Michael open with a phony five-letter word of waggy and allow Joey to play an invalid uh, word of philately. So is that going to come back to haunt him in this game? Uh, so far, he's up still on the scoreboard, but there's still plenty of game left for Joey. Well, the situation here is this. Let's think about strategy. Uh, he also has note card through the A, which scores even more. Um, so, oh, yes. So... What do you do? Okay, what are you thinking in this situation? Well, obviously you're worried about the S. So the, a great way to block the S in this situation and score some points is to play off the DE or the E in noontide and come down five uh, five letters. But I don't know. He could play Aver, A-I-V-E-R, and that will accomplish that. That will block everything and get rid of three vowels and get rid of the VU combination because he'll get rid of the V. So that's one consideration. The other consideration is the all of the bingos that you have to play through, phil, phil, I can't even pronounce it, philately, flately, whatever it is. <laughs> yes. Right. And if he could make like a four letter word coming down uh, to the left of philately, he could accomplish that and score a lot of points. And then you're blocking, you know, three, four bingo lanes concurrently. It's uh, like variable the play. I mean, this scores 28. Great. That seems like a lot. Oh, and Michael does see it blocked Doctrine and, he's and no card, but he has Creodont, which to be fair is an excellent find by Michael on that left side of the board. And that's going to make things really tough for Joey. He's going to have to draw something pretty nice right now to keep pace. I wouldn't say it's that nice. Maybe the Z can give him some, some options here. Right. So this is an open board. This is what happens when you have a lot of bonuses or bingos. Um, and uh, this is where stunning comes in because then you could see every single possibility. So uh, even though I think our analysis was spot on and I think Joey's play was spot on, um, that he blocked the higher, the most likely, you know, there's so much more to play through than to an S uh, th that he uh, did such a beautiful job blocking most of those lines, scoring, putting the V on the double letter, getting rid of the VU combination. He did everything absolutely right but with such an open board and with such a nice rack. And, and, Mike, and Michael does tend to pick very beautifully on the stream and uh, good for him. I mean, that's, that's, that's great. I mean, how lucky is that? And that's, and he's, but he's also finding the words. So I, you can call it luck all you want, but you have to know the words and he knows the words. So, um, you know, it just makes for a very, very exciting game. And it makes for a very, look at Joey. I mean, you couldn't tell for a second that he's behind by 70 and uh, getting, you know, like, oh my God, what is it with this guy? who's constantly picking bingos on the stream like he's just like okay i gotta play my game what can i do i don't have a great rack but what can i do to uh, try to get back into this game and he's looking at zoa over varial i believe yeah zoa looks like really one of the few spots that gets a bunch of points for him of course he's not happy to leave i i m u but maybe just maybe he can from his pov he can pick an S. There is still, unbeknownst to him, there is one that he can draw. One is on Michael's rack, and there it is. But unfortunately, uh, a couple more vowels to go with it. So Joey's in a, a bit of trouble here, though he is temporarily somewhat close on the scoreboard. I definitely expect Michael to play something hooking varioles here that will both score quite well and eliminate the possibility sure. of Joey playing there 
and uh, he might be getting ready to play Stoke. Stook would be potentially slightly better to keep an E in hand as opposed to an O. Maybe he'll see that possibility, but either way, that looks like a, a good next move for Michael, and here he goes. Well, there's three, still three E's on scene and only one O, so he either doesn't know Stu Stook or he's made a decision consciously because there are still three unseen E's. That's fair. Uh, um, it, it, that would that makes sense for sure. I would also add that earlier in the game, I was talking about how good that S is for weirdness at the very <laughs> lower middle part of the board there, that second S. It is rare for players at this level. Look at how many bingos are on this board and how many long words are on this board between weirdness, outdraw, noontide, creodont, criteria, even yeah. philately, not technically a word, but it's amazing that that S has just sat there untouched. The yeah. S being by far the best letter to end an eight letter word with, it's still possible before the end of this game, we will see something go down there and Joey really needs it to be him if he's gonna win this game. Now, Michael might be wishing he kept that E, which will go a lot better with this rack. Uh, Joey is like near, a bunch of well, not so obscure tiramisu is you know not so obscure but uh, myosaur like you you know you spend a lot of uh although there's no but he doesn't he has two eyes but you you spend a lot of time studying racks like this these very unusual words that have lots of a's i's u's and all that and you just wish sometimes you can get you know an opportunity to to play them just to, like it was worth you know 70 hours of study just to get this one word down on a board once during a tournament um but there's nothing, it's just not quite going his way. And he did the right thing with the last rack. Yes, he saved IIU, but he has to score. There are times in a game where you have to balance your rack, and there are times in a game where you just have to maximize your score all the time. And he did the right thing by playing Zoya, I believe. But unfortunately, he did not. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. And he I might didn't... be afraid now to play the U. He's afraid to play the U, probably, even though there's two U's unseen. But we're getting close to the end game. Uh, it could make the difference between winning and losing, and I wouldn't be so quick to be getting. I'd be thinking around now. I don't don't know that I want to get rid of that you right now. What about you, uh, Will? With two yeah. years unseen, would you would you makes be getting total, rid of it or not? I wouldn't, and it makes total sense. Not just because that S in the bottom middle of the board, but if you are able to draw a six letter word starting with S Q. <gasps> That's going to play with guys on that right side of the board. It doesn't even oh need to be a bingo to score Squirm. incredibly well. So if keeping he so now. exactly. So so he unfortunately, he exactly. So he's wishing that, uh, but he does have bariums on his rack. Sadly, yeah. it doesn't look like that's going to fit anywhere. But uh, now the cue gets dumped by Michael, and that dream is officially dead for Joey to, to play something like Squirm there, which, as you said it last game, Robin, um, the goal of this game is not to play bingos necessarily. It's very heavily correlated with winning, but your goal is to score a lot of points, and there are ways to do that without playing all seven of your tiles. So being aware of those, uh, are being aware of those spots and those techniques to get lots of points without using all your tiles is similarly important to knowing those seven and eight letter words. If, if, if Joey had picked the cue and played squirm, he would basically be in the lead right now. Uh, and to uh, rub salt into the wound, he picks up an unplayable bingo as a seven or as an eight. Yeah, this is kind so, of the rite of passage of Scrabble players too, right? We've yeah. all been there with those beautiful seven and eight letter words on our on our tile racks and nowhere to play them. That's just the agony, the, the agony and the ecstasy of Scrabble. Sometimes you have a word like that and it doesn't fit on the board. Other times you have a word, it doesn't fit on the board and your opponent gives you a spot to play it. That's the the ecstasy of Scrabble, I guess. But yeah. the, the only good news for Joey is that there are two clear bingo lines. There's the one to the S, and there is one off guy. And so uh, Michael has done him a favor by playing the Q right now. He knows he can get rid of the U safely. Uh, probably maybe get rid of BU 
I mean, ideally get rid of the, the two clunkier tiles and open up a third lane. That That's the ultimate goal. I don't know that he can do that. Yeah, the you know, board has no space. <laughs> yeah, the top part of the right. board, because of all of those bingos, creodont, criteria, and philately, those topmost tiles, the C, C, and F, make it impossible to open any space at the top of the board for anything. So I think maybe the best that Joey can do is to just play something like Fub in the upper right corner, get rid of his two weakest bingo tiles, and hope yeah. that he draws into something huge in either of the two spots you pointed out. Right. So if I, I would play Fub as well and hope for one of those E's and maybe a T, and then we're in business off the S. He, uh, if he picks the TE, he's got Smarty off Guy for a ton of points. Uh, if he picks that, he has, you know, all the bingos, uh, satire with an M to the S. Uh, and, uh, and that's enough uh, it, possibly to win the game. Because I'm not seeing a lot of great spots right now for Michael. It's not like he's got, uh, he doesn't get the benefit of XO like they do in uh, CSW on the top of the board. I'm not seeing a lot of great places for that X. The V is great for blocking when you're ahead in the game. But now he's got two heavy tiles that he has to get rid of and score with. It's worth noting, too, that if Joey feels absolutely desperate, maybe we've already seen him get away with one play that's not in the dictionary. It's definitely possible that uh, he could try to pull a fast one on Michael here and hope that he picks a word that looks really plausible. <laughs> that's, that's always on the table in an NWL game, um, getting creative at any point. So I want to point out that the first tiles he picked out of the bag were TE. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, and 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 I, I I understand playing Brim, but I don't think coming within 47 points with so many few tiles left in the bag and with such a lovely rack and such E T E E E T P, you know, such good stuff in the rack. Per, you know, now all I see is nauseate. I don't know if I see anything else. Unseated. I mean, um, now he's going to have to play off UE, for example. He's given Michael another chance to block up the board. Um, yeah, I expect. I'm not, I'm not sure. I didn't think scoring was important. I, I think setting up a possibility of two bingos was, was, was important. What do you think? I do agree. And, and a play like this is a big part of the reason why um, you you have to expect that Michael is aware of the state of the board. He's going to try to at least block one of the two lanes available, and he's picked the best one by far, a bingo ending in S, or with an S in seventh out of the eighth position. As you said, you know something ending in ST there would still play, even though it wouldn't hit the triple. Joey really wanted something that hit the triple, and Michael has blocked that. So now the board, there's, I think there's only one tile in the bag here, and Joey just knows that there's nowhere to open new space. And even if he fishes for a bingo along the right side of the board hooking guys, it's going to get blocked even by simple one tile plays through the L and E, right? Like you could easily see. Oh, um, you don't just, even have to do that. You don't even have to do that. I'll, w, you, know, all you could play, play off the W. X, he's got expat. Ooh, you know, did we and lose our board ooh, we just hand? lost the board, but he's got expat to the A hook he's just made under. Oh, yeah. With Av True. And that's enough to, uh, you know, there's only so much that, that Joey can do. I mean, he can't catch up. He's a bingo behind. And uh, even if he catches up with uh, with a bingo starting with an S, Michael's got expat to come back for 45, 50 points, and that's more than enough to win the game. Yeah, for sure. That's true. With the score being at this level, any score that Joey's going to get for a one-tile play will be nowhere near enough to outrun expat. So you're absolutely right on that, Robin. And uh, yeah, it looks like Michael's going to wrap up this game. So certainly can't say that Joey didn't do a ton to try to keep himself in this game. Um, I would say for sure that both players making some inaccuracies over the course of the game, but Michael's moves potentially more, more egregious with um, the waggy and allowing a phony bingo, 
but still Joey had some chances to maybe optimize even further, but either way, pretty impressive to see a game as we can see producer Josh is working on getting that board cam back up. And when we do, you're going to see a board that has something like seven bingos on it or something like that. So <laughs> a lot of, you know, a lot of fireworks in this game. It's hard for, hard for me to sit here and criticize too much oh, when yeah. we, we're looking at a beautiful board full of these seven and eight letter words that, that most of us can, cannot even dream of playing. No, the only the only reason, um, you know, I think there's um there's a history of teachers in my family, and so I see everything as an opportunity to learn. So of course, none of what I'm saying uh, against these people who uh, these players who have uh, actually accomplished more than I have in Scrabble in less time is meant to suggest that I know better than they do. It's merely to open up a dialogue, uh, especially with you, Will, who's such a brilliant um, uh, thinker of, of the game, to okay. how can we improve, what can we help other people who are watching the game to think about as part of their, uh, you know, I, I consider the game almost like a, I, I once made a, a, an analogy to a Scrabble game as a three-part symphony. You know, there's the uh, opening movement, the middle movement, and the and the fiery end movement, which is our end game. And so what? how are we to think in each of these different movements of our symphony that we call a Scrabble game? And that's the only reason that I put into question anything that these players are doing, is simply to, so that we learn how to think better. That's it. Yeah, it's very well said. Um, I. I have our screen up here just so that we can see the board. I'm wondering if there's any chance to be just in the board part of the screen as opposed to like, it's kind of nice to watch the players. But um, Well, I think the other choice was for us to play out the game in mime. So I think this was a better decision. <laughs> True. Um, so, yeah. But um, yeah. anyway, well, we this is – Right. So this is the board um, – and we're just sort of waiting to to see where Joey plays. He's very light. Okay, he played something. Joey played something. If someone can remind us what Joey's rack was, because he saved H U S E. So I can't remember well, what he, else he had. He drew the H. So the H was the last tile in the bag. Okay. So that means he played something with A E N T. I'm not 100% sure where that would be. Um, let's see. Is there any kind of good scoring play? Maybe we can cut back to, oh. Yeah, look at history so we can see the racks maybe, or? Well, it's late in the game, so the engine isn't going to show oh, plays like okay. that. So, yeah, I'm just okay. wondering if maybe we can plop the game screen in the center here. Maybe that's not possible. So um, yeah. either way, uh, sorry about the cameras. We'll figure that out in the break between these two games. But either way, it's fully academic at this point. It's going to be a win for Michael, which he badly needs to keep place with to keep pace with Joey, I should say, as you can see the two win gap between their records right now, Michael definitely needs to beat Joey and he may even need to beat him a second or a third time if he's going to go ahead and win this thing. So we'll just have to see. I'm going to just have a quick look at standings to see if anything has come in. Cool. And then we could tell you uh, a little bit slow today coming in. Let me refresh the page. Did Chloe, did Chloe end up winning her previous round game? That That's something we should know now, I think, right? Or He lost it. Ah, okay. Oh, he right. I think Carl somebody hit. said that in the in the chat that Carl ended up winning that, that rematch. So, so she going must not have bingoed this... six times in that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if she bingoed once with 379. True. So with um, so going into this game, there were two, Max and Joey, at 15 and 5, with that about 400 point uh, deficit uh, between, or 500 and, and 11 between the two in terms of QM, with Max having the higher QM. Uh, Chloe now is at 13-7, and Michael Fagan, who won his last game handily, uh, I believe it was against uh, Christopher Sykes. Both of them are at 13-7. So uh, Michael is not doing Joey any favors whatsoever. And I believe now at this point, Joey, oh no, Joey was in second place. So that's fine. Um, Michael is doing himself a world of, of good by going up to 14-7 to Joey's now 15-5. So there's only one game between them. Chloe absolutely has to win her game. Like all these people have to win their games, obviously. What, what is the best thing to do is to win your game. 
Yeah, uh, definitely controlling, you know, for anybody in that top group, don't want to think too hard about this day. I mean, I, I am, I don't, I wouldn't say notorious. I don't think anybody knows or cares my <laughs> opinion on the standings, but to me, when I'm playing, I am notoriously, you know, I don't care about what has been happening in the other um, games. I just try to focus on winning my games to the best of my ability to the point that I've actually had other people argue on my behalf for I should play not this person, but somebody else, right? Like, I don't even... I let other people handle that when it's appropriate. Right. I don't even know um, the answer. Um, so yeah, I'll give you an but, update. Uh, I'll give you an update um, in CSW uh, where Jason Keller is 16-4 to Adam Logan's 14-6. The only result we have so far that's of interest to us in terms of who might win the tournament is Matthew O'Connor, not surprisingly, got through a very fast game and he lost it handily, 346 to 528 against Tim Weiss. So now both of them are at 13 and 8. But Matthew has a comfortable cushion of almost 800 cum points between the two of them. They are the only two at 13 and 8 while we're waiting for Jason Bruzma, Daniel Blake, and Jason Ubica, who also could reach 13 and 8 if they win. But that is the only result of, of import in terms of who's going to win the tournament um, that I could give you. The round 21 uh, ratings uh, results from uh, our division that we're watching now of import is that Max Panich, who is just having the tournament of his life, is uh, not quite because he's not like 20 and uh, one, but he's 16 and five and he has just won his game, making him 16 and five. He has won 487 comfortably win by over uh, two, uh, over 120 points to Wes Eddings. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how these um, pairings are going on that he's playing somebody who's 11 10 when he's 16 5 but i'm sure someone can explain that to us and chloe fatsis sadly has lost again uh badly 361 to 487 so again not a comfortable game for her she hasn't surpassed 379 in the two games and she lost that game to um oh she lost that game to max yeah i think she played max general, yeah so at 16 and 5 with two games to go Nobody can catch Max other than Joey. Yeah, Joey's I guess that's true. Although Michael's about to win, right? So technically Michael Michael's about to win twice. So it looks like a yeah. three horse race in NWL between Max Panich, Joey Malik, who just lost, and Michael Fagan, who just won. So it's going to be tricky given that only three players have realistic winning chances. One of those people is going to have to play somebody without chances of actually winning the tournament which is that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes i think if we're understanding those standings correctly right and the um cum difference um joey mike with this win and michael won by what about 150 points easily 170 so michael is going to go up to about 1200 cum he will be the only 14 and 7. joey's at 15 and 5 but he's just um lost all these cumes like you know so he's going to be around the 400 so michael with his 1200 cum to joey's uh 400 yes joey has a game in hand but he's very precarious now because michael has such a higher cum so if michael and joey play each other in the next game and michael wins michael will go ahead of joey even though they both have the same number of wins yeah, um, <laughs> there's there's a lot of intricacies here in the standings. It boils down to the fact that it looks like it's going to be three players in NWL with winning chances, and we might actually have a clinching situation in Collins, as I believe that Keller and Logan are playing right now. So if Jason wins that game, he'll be three games up with two games to go. So it's possible if Jason's able to clinch that game, that we may be sticking with NWL from here on out. Um, yeah. I know that we're working on getting that camera back up and running. I think it's uh, not not a um, too much of an insightful statement to say we, we, we need to look at that board to give you guys the coverage that you are wanting there in the chat. Thank you to everybody for watching so far our first Scrabble stream of 2024. First of many, hopefully, Robin. So let's, yeah, so let's do a little bit of wrapping up. Um, we're probably going to need to take a bit of a break. 
uh, not only for the um, for the pairings that have to be done, but also obviously to fix the camera. So it's a good opportunity just to give you a little of information. Uh, number one, what I want all of you to do, I only see 27 thumbs up. Uh, it really helps the channel uh, to uh, say, to subscribe. Click mine now. Channel. So, yeah, so everybody now, is right now, go hit that uh, thumbs up and we'll remind you again, maybe some people went out of the room uh, while we're in between games. So hit that subscribe button as well so that you get all the latest information about uh, letsplayscrabble.com. We have some upcoming tournaments. So Let's Play Scrabble is the wonder child of Kieran uh, O'Connor and Josh Greenway, who are committed to not only bring you tournaments, they're committed to bringing you quality tournaments, they're committed to bringing you multiple tournaments, and they're committed to bringing you innovative tournaments. And I think they are succeeding wildly on all four fronts. And there might be a fifth and sixth that that uh, Will and any someone else can think of. So the next one coming up is March 1st to the 3rd, and it is called the Canadian Scrabble Classic, which may make you think that if you're not Canadian or don't have a, a distant uncle in Chicoutimi, Quebec, that you can't play. But the reality is that um, anybody can play, and we would love to have you there. And if you're American, like, why don't you come visit Canada more often? Like, your dollar is so strong compared to ours. Like, 30, imagine 35% off everything and it's not even Boxing Day, okay? Come to Canada, contribute to our economy, uh, come to a cheaper tournament for you with the same quality of, a, of you know, a higher tournament. We're not getting a good uh, deal on the exchange rate on this one, unfortunately, for the Canadians. So you're getting an even better deal than we are. So come to that one, 15 games. It's held at a Marriott Hotel, so get your Bonvoy um, uh, membership so that you get all sorts of little freebies. Uh, great social events like trivia, and there will be hosted dinners, which uh, you and I have both done, Will. Are you in, Do you enjoy those hosted dinners? It's a great, it's a really cool idea that the Let's Play Scrabble team has done. I'm not sure if I've actually been a dinner host myself, but I love the idea. Well, I and I know that lots of, I don't know if I have the charisma to pull something like that off, Robin, but I do feel that it's an excellent idea. Josh and Kieran are brimming with them. Uh, and you just gave an incredibly compelling sales pitch to go play Scrabble in Canada, by the way. <laughs> something I don't understand that the Americans don't do. Come come vacation in Canada, it's nearby, but you do have to have a passport. Don't, a lot of Americans think that they can get away with a, uh, a driver's license and you can't. So if you don't have your passport in like, like for God's sake, get one. What is in the States? We get 10 years. What do you get for like a hundred bucks or whatever it is? It's like the something cheapest. like that. Yeah. yeah. Five, seven, something a lot. So yeah. Yeah. So get your passport. You can come to Canada anytime, take advantage. And we have amazing food in Canada. I mean, you should see what I ate last night. I was I was tempting people last night where I was going last night. Like, honestly, I, I was literally tearing at some of the courses. So come to Canada. And then if you can't make that one, uh, then there's always the Albany, Albany 4th of July, obviously, July 4th to the 7th. There's the fantastic Lake George tournament that allows you to see the full fo foliage. Wow, I, I can't believe I did that in the first take. Um, uh, <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> It's the, we should call it the alliteration tournament. Uh, so lots of uh, good and fun stuff coming up from the crazy minds of Kieran and Josh, who are always trying to bring you uh, new fun stuff. And uh, Kieran's uh, son, Matt, uh, is a trivia master as well. And he gave us a doozy of a trivia game in Lake George. So um, just so many after hour things to do, so much fun, so much love. So I mean, the fact they're trying to bring the community together. They're making a concerted effort to make the community even more loving and strong with each other, which I think should be noted and commended and rewarded with attendance. Yeah, we got to support these guys. The least you could do is click a couple buttons on your computer screen right now to support Let's Play Scrabble. Um, quick standings update. Apparently, Adam Logan defeated Jason Keller oh! in the previous round. So that Dude. creates more drama in the Collins division. So it's not 100% clear where we're going to go. So I think we do need a break here to both get that camera fixed as well as to figure out what game we're going to bring you. But either way, Robin, I'm very excited <laughs> nope. for the last for two <laughs> rounds here. So um, in yeah, the future, so... Josh, can you give us your notes in, in one line? Because he said ready. And I'm thinking, oh, OK, well, I guess we're going back to play. And he goes, for a break. <laughs> yeah. 
So we'll take a quick break right now and be back in a couple minutes with our final two rounds here from the Albany New Year's Tournament in 2024. Crazy to say, a new year, a new tournament. See you in a minute. Go pop your popcorn and come back soon, guys. See you soon.
Hello, everybody. We are back, and we have our next round's matchup set. We are going to stay in the NWL division and potentially see a game that could either clinch the winner of that division or set up a climactic final game in the NWL division. The matchup is Max Panich versus Joey Malik, who we just saw on the stream against Michael Fagan. Robin, very exciting matchup. Uh, you mentioned that Max is having, I think you said, the tournament of his life, which winning an Albany field like this that is so strong and deep from top to bottom would be an amazing accomplishment for him. Yeah, it's a very, very uh, nice field. Uh, it's uh, obviously not the level of nationals where you have everybody there, but there are so many players in the um, 18, 1900s, uh, we, we just have something like James Donnelly, who's in his 1600s. Now he's up to 1750 after this tournament. He's uh, clearly underrated. Josh Sokol, who, uh, yeah, he's obviously tearing up the second half of this tournament, the last day, because he's uh, he is playing somewhat lower rated players, but that doesn't mean anything. You can always lose. Um, and that's, that's actually a horrible thing to happen when you're at a tournament with... Um, lots of really good players and you end up uh, not doing well but you end up playing really tough players because they're also not having a good tournament so even though you should be able to rise from the ashes uh, in the middle of the tournament by playing uh, some lower rated players you can't do that and uh, and josh is having that uh, difficulty at this tournament which tells you that there's a lot of very good players here nowhere to hide at albany it's i think it's just the the caliber of field that uh, this tournament draws is top notch really some of the best players not, again i said it a couple games ago not just on the east coast of the us and canada but in the entire you know country and north america more broadly people come to this tournament to compete at a very high level and we've seen it on the stream for several days now and i certainly expect we're going to see two excellent games to finish off our tournament here, only two rounds to go, Robin. Fatigue has to be setting in, especially given the New Year's revelry that players <laughs> potentially enjoyed yesterday. Did you get any reports from any of the players about what went on last night? What kind of debauchery? No, no direct reports, but I can only extrapolate based on my own experience uh, at these events. Um, I myself am pretty low key. I'm not apt to go out and party too much. I like to get my beauty sleep and play Scrabble as well as I can. But I've seen <laughs> some players staggering into these tournaments in the early mornings um, as I think our players are getting set. Max Panic and Joey Malik are sitting down to play in round 22 here. These late rounds have so much riding on them. Uh, it's kind of an electricity in the air late in the tournament over these rounds. Yeah, and I think it just depends on your... <laughs> oh, I have to turn off that. Button. Sorry about that. I had the sound on from the other from the other feet. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you think this is bad, just come to New Orleans, which is like <laughs> every night is New Year's Eve. But I, I think it just, you know, I listen, everybody's different. Some people can play really well having drunk the night before, and some people will have gone to bed at 8.30 last night, 9.30 last night with a, a simple sandwich and a glass of water. So you know, that's you. <laughs> yeah, I've stopped drinking. I don't drink at tournaments anymore. Not that I, I've never been a drink, but like, Nah. What's the point? So it is worth noting that, you know, everybody has different reasons for attending these tournaments. I think most of the reasons are similar. People like to play Scrabble and they like to hang out with like-minded people and a really amazing eclectic group of people that we have in the competitive Scrabble scene. But those proportions are different. You know, some people come primarily to compete. Some people come primarily to socialize. There is no right or wrong answer for why you would right. um, want to participate in some of these things. I think though, our two players in this round, if I had to guess, Joey Malik, Max Panich are probably here to compete. I think they may be sitting at the table now if we want to cut over to that board. There we go. We got our camera back. Our players were seated as Max <laughs> gets up, but back he sits. Looks like he's going to be going first. 
in this game. But yeah, all business for these two guys. I've played them both. I'm sure you have many times, Robin, as well. Yeah. I think of them yeah. as being very focused, very competitive, but also very sportsman, you know, sportsman like totally. over the board. Totally, totally. We have two fine gentlemen here. We have so many lovely, lovely people in Scrabble, men and women, and those who identify otherwise. Um, you could see Joey when we were just cutting over to it, his hand in his uh, chin, which is not the position of somebody who is uh, exceedingly nervous and, um, you know, uh, one step away from pacing around the room. Uh, he's got a job to do. He's prepared for it. He's ready to do it. And he's uh, getting to it. And both players have some issues with their opening racks in this game. Max going first with three N's and two O's to go along with his F. Not the best set of tiles you'll ever see. Whereas Joey's got two H's and two I's, which isn't all that great in its own right. So who is going to resolve the pressing issues that their rack is uh, presenting to them faster? And it looks like Max is immediately going to dump all that clunk off the rack. A little surprising. I feel like I would have played Fawn here. You would have played Fawn saving N O N E. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. 12 yeah. points, you know, 12 yeah. points. You keep the two ends. That's not great, but overall, it's a good balance between vowels and consonants. And I don't know, it's close. I could, I certainly don't think exchanging is some kind of massive mistake or anything like that, but I feel like my instinct says I would play fun. Okay. The trouble with noon, it does everything you want to do. It un triples the ends and it, un you know, it gets rid of the O, which is less desirable than the E, but there's no escaping putting a tile next to a double letter uh, tile below it. There's no there's no escaping it. So I think that's what went, if no, no was a word, I think that might have been something worth considering, uh, but it's not. So I think Max made a decision that he's now maybe perhaps regretting because his next rack is even worse than his first. That's amazing that he somehow drew back a lot of the same clunk that he just dumped into the bag there. He uh, he exchanged something like um, N-O-N-O-F, and he drew N-O-O-O-A. <laughs> so um, not a great start, but the nice thing is that it looks like he's inadvertently going to block. Well, not inadvertently, but he's going to block a potential bingo here of airship i believe that's a valid word from the yes. h if joey were to have spotted that so max dodging a little bit of a bullet here he plays new this is a kind of weird looking word but one that you see a lot in competitive scrabble to get rid of those uh overload of o's that you may have and more of them on max's rack now well, what do you think about what he saved, the O-N? Um, I think that was a little questionable as well. I can understand if you've had three N's on your rack, likelihood of you picking another N is much lower. And then you wouldn't want to probably save an N with no vowel. But there's a lot of O's. And um, well, if you were going to pass on that opening rack, what would you, what would you have saved and what would you have kept? He, he kept uh, O-N? Same, he saved, uh, I believe he saved O-N, yeah. Oh man, that's shock! I can't believe that. Why not? Or did he e save? No, he saved E N. I I understand corrected. He, he saved. He e must have saved E N. Yeah, I yeah. I can't. That that seems standard. Um, you know, there might be situations where you would keep an O along with other tiles on an exchange, but you would probably need a nice mix of consonants to do that, to want to keep an extra vowel like the O. Usually when you're exchanging and considering keeping vowels, the E right at the top of the list, definitely want to keep an A if you only have one and you have a nice mix of consonants to go with it. The I, now we're talking maybe, if you have really good bingo tiles, you might keep an I, and an O is probably the rarest um, vowel that you would regularly keep on an exchange. The U is a tile you would almost never keep unless you have Q considerations to worry about. As we see Joey right. play higher, that looks pretty good to me. Right. Uh, you know, it has, takes a lot of extensions, the D, the E, the R, the S. Uh, but it um, scores a lot of points, takes that R hook, the were hook, which also takes the L besides the S, um, and uh, cleans, cleans up his rack quite a bit. Yeah, it looks like a good play. Sets up, uh, I believe, 
Joey had that S, so now he would set up a lot of places to play an S hook, especially Shire. That's going to be a nice one to have in his pocket. So a lot of bingo options on this board for seven-letter words now after Toya. Uh, Max's play, a nice way to dump a bunch of vowels. Another word that you see very, very commonly at this level of play. I think it's a monetary unit of uh, Papua New Guinea or something like that. But thank goodness they use that as their currency because we certainly use it all the time in Scrabble. Which word are you talking about? Toya, isn't that a Oh, is that what that is? is that, oh, you know, I word? never knew what it was. Okay, very good. I might have missed, I might, I might have said the wrong country. I know it's, it's a, a country in, I think, in the Pacific Island region, but uh, thank goodness they use that for their currency. And it's interesting, a lot of those, a lot of those currencies sometimes take an S and sometimes don't. And you're correct, it is Papua New Guinea. It's a monetary unit equal to one hundredth of another Scrabble word, Kina, K-I-N-A. Oh, man. Okay, so no, I obviously I can look up the definitions anytime. I just want to give myself a huge amount of credit <laughs> for knowing that I actually did not look that up. I promise you all I would be honest if I did and I looked up the definition in Zizva. That was pure memory right there. So thanks. Nice. Thanks to, to myself for for knowing a definition for once. Um, so back over to Joey. Wow, he's got some nice stuff there. The Z, he's got an S, uh, which he had for over from last turn. I wonder, is there really a productive way to use the Z? And he sort of answered my no, question right so. there by not playing it. There was a word that was taken out of the dictionary that would have hooked onto Shire, higher and Shire. That might have cleaned stuff up a little bit. Uh, taking a bit of a chance, saving a Z with uh, no other vowel. And we'll see if that, we're already seeing that it's a problem. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it scored a lot, uh, set up his S hook as well. So now he has two nice S hooks, or three S hooks. So there's a lot to be said for what, and early in the game, so many vowels left, you know, it's just crazy how you could have like 40 vowels in the bag and just constantly pick consonants. It's just unbelievable how that happens so often. Yeah, these um, imbalances are definitely, they rear their head at the worst possible time, and it is up to the players to manage them as best they can. So I wonder if Max is going to have the, um, is he going to have the board vision here to try to find a play that hooks were with a Y? He has a couple plays such as Moni that actually puts, a Y there and scores quite well, but it looks like he set up Envoy to play under the D of Plaid, which will be a little more it's, aggressive there. Um, I don't know if he's looking for Hoopy as well. That for me, for some reason, that's one that I can't keep in my head, whether it's good or bad. It's not good. Um, I love Moni, although it does save the V. Um, He's very close. I just have to say, I ha he's very close to a word that I've always wanted to play, which is evonymous. E v e n o m y s. <laughs> True. And he oh, he makes a totally Elevon different is play. A levon, very nice. It gets rid of that v. We never like to see the v stay on our rack any longer than necessary. Um, it's an interesting choice. I was, I actually had not identified that as I really thought it was up to either Moni hooking Worry or Envoy under Plaid, but he's found a third option that looks like a solid choice. He may not, he may not know Worry. Um, he might have heard about weirdness and wanted to make his own extension to the triple like Joey did. <laughs> True. <laughs> he wanted to open the board uh, because he's behind and he's playing a very, very good player and you need to have lots and lots of opportunities. Um, the, the bingo from, uh, hoop from the, from, uh, the first, uh, from the double letter to hoops is, uh, would be worth a ton of points as well. And that kills it to some extent. So there's lots of good reasons for all of this that he's done. Yeah. The S certainly still plenty valuable on this board between plaids, shire, maybe you can fit something with words, but probably not. So certainly the, in many cases, the best S hooking spot is likely to be hoops. Uh, it's hard to say for sure from Max's POV, whether any of Joey's moves really scream out that he necessarily has an S I, I wouldn't be 
immediately yeah. sure that Joey well, would have one. But at this level, one of the tiles that a player at this level would keep very frequently is an S. So as the game kind of continues on, the odds of your opponent having an S left over on their rack start to slowly increase, even if you haven't really seen any concrete evidence of them making a play that suggests they have an S. So playing playing aggressively um, to to prevent those spots is rarely is rarely a bad idea. Well, I think I think you can inf I mean, can you infer that he has an S? Well, he just played higher, which takes an S. He just played plaid, which takes S's on either, you know, on both sides. But um, you know, he's, it also just could be that he's playing off tiles and he's anticipating picking up an S soon, and he wants to have the board nice and open. Uh, that's fine. Ma Max has a really nice word on his rack, Simon. That is a word that does play to the right of higher, uh, which he is still going to be able to play. Joey makes the decision. To, bu to, to burn the S, yeah, to burn the S, which would have, uh, it, it's less dangerous than under hoops because now you can't, you know, you can't just stick an A under it uh, and score that's, a lot of points. That's really interesting, that positioning, because Joey had the ability to play words that kept the Z, potentially something hooking words, right? Like if he wanted to go ahead and play something yeah. like bats or something yeah. alongside making H A I T and words. He could do that while keeping his Z for next turn, but he's opted instead to play Zags there for a similar score. Um, I wonder if uh, he must have some reasoning for that, but I'm not immediately able to suss out what that is. Well, on a board like this, which is not very Z or Z amenable, <laughs> Uh, and saving MB, which is synergistic, uh, and doesn't—I mean, doesn't open too much. I mean, I, I think there's lots to be said for it. I think Joey has lost a tile, which is why you see that the um, clocks have stopped. And I think we see Josh in the background there doing a search. Um, uh, oh yeah, it's invar invariably going to be a vowel because I think they're on search for a vowel for sure. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's he would like it to be Val for sure. Let's for his sake. Let's hope. Um, but yeah, the case of the missing tile is still unfolding here. This is just to be very clear. This is uh, clearly an honest mistake of, and it is a Val. Yeah. Very nice. Um, but uh, yeah, the, just an honest mistake. Sometimes it's you know finicky drawing the little tiles out of the bag and one falls onto the ground. Nothing to worry about there. Joey is has an absolutely sterling reputation in every oh, way. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Um, very yeah, very clear. So all right, um, back over to he's Max like, now. I, that I don't think Max, play. I don't think he knows. T I don't think he knows worry because Teeny would play there right now as well and block the mm. nice bingo lane through the A that Joni... Oh, I am completely wrong. There you go. Wait, wait. So he just made the decision. Yeah, he made the decision okay. to play uh, Elevon. Yeah. Yes. He wanted to get uh, rid of the V. So Teeny, which would have um, already gone down before the play of Zags, it still goes down after that S is there with the hooking sh to make she so nicely spotted it is that answers our question that uh, as you said robin he must know that hook and he opted to play elevon for um other strategic reasons maybe he feels more comfortable on an open board against such a, a veteran player as joey who knows um so nicely nicely spotted um you know i used to enjoy the at v until somebody pointed out to me that it's a terrible tile. And then it kind of seeped into my brain cells <laughs> that the V is a horrible tile. And I suddenly <laughs> started hating it. And then I watched Matt Kanick on the last broadcast and he is a huge uh, uh, non-fan of G. And I used to like the G. And then I, I guess I'm very gullible. <laughs> You should stick to your guns. If you <laughs> if you have Robin, your instincts are very strong as a Scrabble player. Yeah. If you're if you're not liking those 
letters, then stick to your guns. Or if you are liking them, I think every letter as you know, I have a bunch of YouTube videos where I try to talk about each letter, what makes it good, what makes it bad. Even the letters that we claim are weak and bad letters all have some attributes that redeem them in various situations. Sure. So it's, it's more, you know, there's definitely you can look at things from a mathematical standpoint and say, well, there's just fewer seven and eight letter words containing a V than there are certain other letters, but uh, every letter has, has a chance to shine. So I think it's, it's less about having those emotional responses of like, Oh, I hate this letter. Or right, this letter right. is the worst and more just taking each letter for what it is in various situations. Now, Joey is taking the very tenuous, um uh god uh challenging um move of playing a word that he played in the last game that he lost uh it <laughs> oh does... is that bad karma <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm saying <laughs> yes it was a losing word before so why is it going to be a winning word now is that the is that the, that's, <laughs> the that's thought, the thought. <laughs> yes um so yeah um Alex Dings in the chat, by the way, says, Robin, did you know that the S sucks? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the point to... is even worse. So always throw it back. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, so Joey has so, egoist yeah. that doesn't play off Elevon, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah. You know, e e yeah. Egotists. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Even, even better. Um, but uh, it looks like there is one. Egotist, yeah standout play here at least from a scoring perspective for max he has coom set up on his rack one of our favorite scrabble words without the any any sign of a vowel cwm um not sure if there's even a reasonable place to play that but there is one word and one word only that scores in the 40s here as far as i'm aware <gasps> oh let's try and to figure it out it is not the easiest spot it's kind of a tricky word. I'll give you a hint. It's we are using it here on the stream. <laughs> that, that doesn't help. <laughs> we are using it on this stream. That didn't help. That wasn't a good hint. Okay. Well, it, when it, you... well I mean, uh, deodorant. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Let, so ja, producer Josh chiming in cam. That's pretty close. That's basically as close to being correct as you can be and not actually be right. So it's a type of cam maybe? It is a type of cam. Yes. Oh my goodness. Let me think. Let's see. Every, everybody try to think. And he's going to miss it, which is, this is going to oh, be a webcam, a, big... a webcam. Does... Oh yeah. Webcam. So we web go. webcam through the B of brim would have scored 46 points here. And that is not an easy find. Those letters, the W, the B, the C, the M, they don't mesh well together at all. So seeing a word like that is either going to happen kind of as a flash of inspiration, or you're not that likely to see it because it just mm -hmm. does not conform to normal word shaping <laughs> rules. So Wolf is the play instead, but maybe a, a bit of a missed opportunity. Well, ironically, he's Max. now got cameras, so, you know. True, yeah, we're gonna <laughs> get cameras one way or another here, I guess, as he puts, he almost has it lined up there. Um, but yeah, webcam through that B of Brim would have scored 46 points compared to just 18 for Wolf. So let's just, we'll have to see that that feels like the first play of the game where we could make us a, a strong argument that if Max had, had seen that other play, he would have played it for sure. Well, you know, and, and that brings up an interesting psychological phenomenon when you have such a heavy rack with a, a five, was it five consonants that are quite heavy? Uh, the natural inclination is to uh, hold onto a vowel, which web, webcam would not allow you to do. But if you limit yourself to only looking for words that use one vowel, you will miss gems like the one that uh, that uh, uh, Will has found for us. So that's a good point to make. Yeah, for sure. It's tough. Um, it, it really, this is many situations like this arise where pretty much that is why players will study the dictionary carefully because you basically are trying to engineer a situation where when you have those letters on your rack, 
the words that are relevant to you pop into your brain instantly without effort. That's definitely the best way um, to make sure that you see those words. And Joey, meanwhile, playing gits, I was curious why he didn't play gist and plaids there, but it looks like he, as you can see, he's lined up something quite nice on his tile rack there. Right, and does he have two places to play it? I don't think so. The likelihood of it being locked, however, is exceedingly low. Uh, the thing is, it doesn't fit next to plaids. Does it fit somewhere else? I think it's going to fit alongside brim with the emo overlap. Loudest and tousled are both going to fit with emo, if I'm not mistaken. So he has the one spot. Loudest and tousled. Very right. Very. Oh, yeah. So, emo, of course. So yeah, he has perfect. the one spot for it, but if that spot were to somehow be blocked, which I'm not, again, as you said, it's not that clear to me how that will happen. But if it were to happen, that might put Joey in a little more trouble. Well, let's see if there's anything. Can you get like the C on the triple letter through the B? Like you can play Kaber. That still won't block it. So yeah. Uh, that's still going to allow the bingo. That would certainly be a nice play. Oh, boy. This is a not phony. a valid word. Oh, so oh my a very, very word-like. This word certainly looks like a word. Um, it happens to not be in the Scrabble Dictionary. It's a six-letter word, which is a notorious blind spot for competitive Scrabble players because six-letter words tend to be, if you're playing that many letters, you're usually going to be trying to play all your letters, a seven- or eight-letter word. Or if you're not playing all your letters, you're going to play shorter. And Joey isn't even going to think twice, Robin. Yeah, and... I don't know what to say about something like that. I don't, I, um, if it is, you know, I think it's incumbent upon us as top players to, we, we're so bingo prone heavy that we study that we, we tend to neglect the sixes. And, um, and you can see right here, it could be the difference between winning a game and not winning a game. Um, and so, you know, it's almost like, uh, the Hail Mary passes, like, why doesn't every, uh, uh quarterback do that because you know five out of ten times you're going to get pass interference called right so why not just throw out these really you know uh, obscure sixes that may or may not be good and get away with it so uh i don't know uh he didn't even hold him so i don't know yeah it looks like other words some folks in the chat are pointing out aramid agamid agamic there, there yeah. are a bunch of words that are close, and that is usually what you're going for with a phony like this, something that looks very similar to other words in the dictionary or that you could reasonably inflect from other words. So the fact that, you know, agamid and agamic are both good, sure. and ar sure. aramid is a word, it makes this word feel very parallel to that one in its inflections. And I think the biggest thing for Joey is he had a bingo that played in only one spot and losing his turn to challenge that while risking that bingo spot being blocked was just too much for him there. That's the thing. I mean, the timing is everything, right? Like, I, like my Torquey, another six, that was a phony, but there was a bingo to counter it. And what if it is good and then she blocks my bingo spot? So I think that's some of the thinking that goes into it if you're not 100% sure. Um, and I just want to do, say on another personal note, which has absolutely nothing to do with Max whatsoever, but every single time that I have played Bebop in a game, I have lost that game. I just wanted to put that up. Oh, all right. Let's see if the Bebop curse is going to continue. That was certainly his best play there. A great play by Max to get his clunky B and P combination off the rack together for probably the most points that he had available on that turn so isn't it nice robin when you're trying to score points every turn you're trying to yeah. dump your weakest letters every turn isn't it nice when the same play accomplishes both of those goals unbelievable it's just like the sky parts the cloud uh, the cloud the clouds disappear and it's like angels are playing you know a beautiful tune um, and you just feel so, so much lighter and things are, maybe things are going my way and maybe I can pull this out even though I'm behind. So it's a, it's a wonderful feeling. And you see, he's picked up a very balanced rack with a blank. 
uh, with a blank and it, even if he can't score with with the through the G for example uh, he perhaps can score with the X and then save a really gorgeous rack so he is sitting really pretty right now Max is even despite the bebop curse I'm just gonna put that out there Wow okay so maybe he can break that curse once and for all but it is worth noting of course that uh, Joey dumped his Q in the bottom corner of the board there, and he drew another N. So that's a, a weird rack. The saving grace for Joey is that he has a Y as well to sort of take some of the sting out of all of those consonants. Yes. But uh, he is up by, even though Max has lots of great tiles, including the S and the blank and a nice mix of letters on his rack, vowels and consonants, Joey's still ahead in the game. So it feels kind of like a coin flip right now based on the score difference in the game and the difference in, in quality of tiles where Max definitely has the better of it. So right now there's really only two places uh, to easily bingo. One is off the to make an S off Bebop and the other one is to play through the G. A more difficult one is to play to the N um, on the bottom triple row, and an even harder one is to make an SE off hoops. So we have four places to bingo right now. And I think with this rack, my inclination is to perhaps play something like lying through the G and kill the easiest place to bingo. Um, yeah, that, the that looks good. It is it is Max's turn right now. So he is going to be acting first. Yeah. But it, when, it, when it goes back to Joey, a play like yeah, lying yeah. looks yeah. like it could be great. Um, lying, dying, something like that. Um, so yeah, we'll see what Joey elects to do. I definitely am curious to see, as you said, Robin, Bebops looks like a pretty nice, if you were to draw... Oh boy, what are we getting here? Oh, just Zirik. Okay, I thought he was going to go for some kind of insane phony, but Zirik would would be a reasonable play in his. I would play. Le what do you think of Lex? And that gets rid of. I the was gonna. Hopefully. I was about to talk about Lex and just thinking that you know, in Max's shoes, the Bebop's hook. If he had an S, he would definitely want to leave that open, but he doesn't have an S. And right. you outlined all the other good places where a bingo is available on this board. I kind of like Lex to take the sting out of that Bebop's hook, given that I don't have the S if I'm Max. I want to get rid of that spot and preserve all the other spots that I am much likelier to hit with my blank. Right. I agree with you. I, I would kill that spot because I don't have it. Yes, I have a blank. But then that forces me to use the blank as an S. Uh, we're getting a bit lower on tiles. The likelihood of the S being on Joey's rack, especially after playing tousled and get, getting rid of seven tiles, is a lot higher. So I would just like to um, balance my rack, leave a beautiful A-E-I-R blank rack, um, and uh, kill that spot. So that's personally what I would have done. Zirik is, uh, is, it scores almost as well. I think it's four points less. Um, gets rid of t uh, two vowels instead of one when I have quite a bit of vowels on my rack. So there's lots to be said for Zurich as well. Yeah, no major concerns with Zurich. I'm not, yeah, I think both of us are not about to say that that's some kind of terrible mistake. Um, right. But the nice thing about Lex is it would score four more points and it would keep your R as a really important vowel. It yeah. kind of looks like that R would go a long way on Max's rack right now, right? That extra consonant would help him quite a bit. He's got the four vowels and two consonants. Maybe he would wish to have that R back. But as you say, Zirik, far from some kind of massive error. Now, somebody asked me why I didn't suggest drawing versus uh, lying, and that's just a personal preference. I did it for, for two reasons. One is I don't like LN together. Um, and the second one is I love R's, <laughs> and I don't want to give it up. And the third one is that it takes an F hook in front, and if I need that, if I and I pick it, um, you know, uh, I might need that in, in an end game in order to make some, you know, that, you know, 20, 20, 30 points. So that's the thinking behind doing lying instead of drawing. That, that's, of course, both of them are valid. But um, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it worked out for Joey. 
Yeah, it's interesting. Um, part of it may just have been wanting to turn one extra tile to try to get that blank, which of course we know um, there's one of them is on Max's rack. But from Joey's perspective, both blanks are still yet to be played. So every tile that you play has a chance of materializing into one of those two. So as you get further and further into the game, when you reach situations like that, it starts to be a bit of a higher upside to play each subsequent tile after the first. But I do agree that keeping an R is a great way to bridge certain groups of consonants. And yeah. it is yeah. one of the best bingo tiles in, in, the se in the set. So R's are definitely a tile that we, we look favorably upon. So a lot, a lot of factors to weigh there. And it's hard to, hard to really suss out um, what the best move was there as we see Max playing EF uh, alongside drying for a pretty good score, but leaving again a pretty vowel heavy leave. And I worry a bit too that he's going to pick another U because there's a couple more to come. I'm very worried about that play, um, but no, it kind of kind of worked out. Uh, if there were places to bingo on the board, the, 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 remember also we're we're again where I am anyway. I'm not going to accuse you of it. So thinking about bingo, bingo, bingo. But the reality is this is a nine point game. And uh, people win plenty of games by 10 points, right? Uh, you don't have to win by one or two bingos. So uh, he's got Junta now uh, a lot, uh, on top of Bebop, uh, which Ooh, nice. he doesn't, you don't have, have to bingo, right? You just get 45 points, 50 points, and that might be enough. In fact, this board is getting increasingly inhospitable. A lot of the options that you outlined a couple turns ago, Robin, have started to dry up. The G and I of Gits were blocked pretty effectively by drying, which gave very little back. In fact, essentially only <laughs> the D in third position of an eight letter word. That's the only thing you could play something through that D of drying, but it would need to be incredibly specific to fit up there. You still have the Bebop's hook, but neither player has a real S. Um, and you still have a couple options. If you were to get that S, you could maybe, again, as you said, play something with hoops with SE or maybe fix fit something to the N of Elevon. These are not very good bingo prospects. So it's very possible that despite both players having pretty good bingo tiles on the whole, Max's rack spoiled a little by the J, Joey with very good bingo tiles, but the board is not so good for actually getting bingos down. And it's tricky for Joey holding a nine point lead with good bingo tiles. But I feel like the game situation suggests that he should try to score as many points as he can. And he doesn't have the best tiles to achieve that. Right. And I think what he needs to do right now is play along that top um, triple, triple row or triple row to not only um, kill the bingo possibilities or high scoring possibilities on top of Bebop, but also to kill that unlikely but still possible row uh, with the D as the third letter. So he will do kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, something like Galena up there actually looks really strong. Again, remember that from Joey's POV, both blanks are still out. That last S, that valuable final S is still out. I would be sorely tempted in his shoes to, instead of admiring my beautiful bingo tiles that don't actually help me to get a bingo right. on this tight board, I would be trying to get that last S and get one of those two blanks. So I, my instinct suggests that a play like Galena using as many tiles as possible. Note too that you are under no risk of duplicating your eye by playing that, that he has the last eye. So um, instead he's opted to play something similar. I like the idea here. I, I do yeah. think that Galena one would, more be slightly, would be slightly better. Yeah. One more vowel, one more tile. You can't duplicate that eye, but either way, I like the instinct here. And it's And it doesn't make it it, it would have been um, something like Galena would have made it much more difficult to still play through that D. Playing off an LI is very, very easy uh, to play underneath if, uh, you know, A, A N, A D, A T. Uh, but the other concern that Joey would have had is uh, three U's and a V unseen. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so, by playing off so many beautiful bingo prone tiles, you are having a possibility of picking up three U's and a V. And Very true. Pick up one. 
Yeah, he, he got that, that mixed. He got that mixed bag. He got the V and the U as you described, but he also got the S. So some good, some bad. Yeah. So now, uh, and I know I mispronounced it. I, it should have been Junta probably, but now he's red. There you go. Very nice. Yeah. And look at the look at the save. I mean, come on. You can't get ATE better. blank. Yeah. So yeah. Max is definitely. Let's see what he draws, um, because Joey has solid tiles, but he just watched that Bebop oh. hook go, go up in smoke. Oh wow! Look at that. Oh man, really he good bingo up. tiles in a nut yeah. in a vacuum, but does he actually have anything playable here? Yeah, that seems unlikely. But let's uh, let's think about it. And it's going to take a little while to get through those two blanks. Yeah, brutal uh, situation uh, for him uh, as it's back to oh, Joey. Our butian, but it's W A. Oh, too bad. So I close. don't know. If Maybe there's a chance that Joey will try to play something through the V of Elevon, and that will create an opportunity for him to play right. Arbutian. Ave. Just play Ave. Uh, well, why would you do that? You wouldn't want to keep VU, though. Just yeah. play Vav. If you play Vav. That would do it. Uh, that was, that that was what came to my mind, as maybe Joey will play that. I, I think he'll look elsewhere for a play. That feels like with the score so <gasps> close, I look think... Auto oh. save, auto save. Oh my god. Auto save. Do you think Max sees it? It looks like he's probably set it up here, right? Auto save through the V of Elevon. That would be just an incredible play by Max Panich. And frankly, if he sees it here, and we think he does, that effectively is going to clinch this tournament for him. Wow, that would be incredible. Uh, what a way to, to finish this off if he spots that, Robin. Is your heart pounding? I know. <laughs> oh my God, this is so I can't exciting. wait. Yeah, I can't wait to see. Um, I think if I'm Joey here, I am sorely tempted to burn my S on the ifs hook. There are very few good places to score any points on this board. I'm trailing Uvias. by 10. Yeah, Uvias. I'm playing I'm playing something like Uvias up there because the it not only does it continue to burn through tiles in search of those blanks, but it scores a fairly solid number of points here. 34. Down by 10, you're getting 34 points, potentially drawing some good stuff out of the bag. The, the C, the K, that will help you score, and you could easily get one of those blanks as well. I would be sorely tempted to play Uvias here to surge into the lead on the scoreboard on a really difficult board and try to draw blanks. But it certainly looks like if he does that, if he plays Uvias, he will empty the bag and Max will have an opportunity to walk this one off with auto save an incredible two blank bingo. And it certainly looks with the, I can see his hand trembling a little bit, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to guess that he sees it and he is praying that that spot stays open. See, and if I'm and if I'm Joey, like when I'm playing Googles and I'm playing fast, I would do I would play Uvias. But every time I come and watch one of these tournaments and I see the beautiful play from the experts, um, Vav uh, pretty much it almost does everything right. It makes it it it, it blocks the S hook to, to hoops, and it doesn't necessarily, it actually makes it easier to play to the end. So, but there we go. Wow. Okay. Here we go. Uvias emptying the bag, putting Joey up by a pretty solid score, holding ED on his rack. And we're going to find out real quick whether Max has spotted this play through the V. He had AUT lined up on his rack. Auto save kind of funny such a modern word is gonna that word must have only made it in in one of the last couple just recent updates. just and, the last uh, one i believe and he's got two make... blanks with less with less than five minutes to go in a game that could clinch the tournament for him so this is <laughs> like it is it, according uh... to the according to the computer engine it is the only winning move for him here if he does not spot that bingo through the v and let make no mistake to find that bingo with two blanks on your rack, not easy by any stretch. Finding a bingo with one blank is hard enough. 
finding it with two is absolutely incredibly difficult. I really thought that he had spotted it, but maybe actually he oh, here hasn't. he goes again. And you know, if you watch Wheel of Fortune, you'll always hear Pat Sajak go, but the words that start with a vowel are the hardest. It's true. And, uh, and this one is one of those. This is one of those things. But yesterday we talked about the importance of breaking up study by studying prefixes and suffixes. And now you can add auto to your list of words that you need to study. Um, and when you have that AU to get, like all I see is nauseate, right? Like that's all, you want to do the ATE. You just want to graduate, nauseate. You want to do that. But you have to force yourself to do these prefixes and suffixes. Now, from Joey's POV, the reason that he's in a decent position here is that Max's tiles are all one-point tiles, and Joey does have the play of corked available through the R and E at the top of the board, the R of Beautiful. drying, the E of uvias. That is enough points to likely, I, I think that the idea is that is enough to put him over the finish line if he spots that play. And Joey being Joey, I just know he will. So um, that's what we're looking at here. Either Max is able to end this game now and, oh man, this is, uh, I am getting so tense here. I truly thought that Max had this play set up on his rack, Robin, but it's clear from the fact oh. that he hasn't played that he had that he's not maybe spotted it yet. So this is what's going on in Max, I believe, okay? I have an opportunity to clinch the tournament. I've got both blanks. I, I probably at this point need to find, I only have one pointers. So it's going to be very, very difficult for me to uh, win this a game unless I find something that scores like 30 points. Um, I, and I, I just, I'm not finding it. Uh, the clock is going down. It's now two minutes, eight, two minutes, seven. I'm very, very aware of it. And your ability to synthesize information at this point just goes, you know, in a deep uh, descent. Uh, oh God, as, does it ever. Yeah. Yes. You're yeah. So and right. he's, missed, he's not seen it. Yeah. Oof. And he's going to be real upset later. So the other thing, too, is that it's not so obvious that you can't win the game just by a normal end game sequence here, right? So not only does Max have to look as hard as he can to try to bingo through the N of Elevon or through the V, he also has to try his best to come up with and try to figure out, can I win this game with a normal end game sequence? Which it feels like <gasps> the answer should be yes. <laughs> not again. Um, board cam we do have the quackle board hopefully ready this time i'm ready with it to bring up a board um to cover we had like a issue. battery issue last time and that was fixed by plugging it in so i'm not sure why this is happening again oh there we go well, here we okay, go here we we're go. prepared we're we're always prepared <laughs> i'm operating i'm operating this link here for you guys and hopefully we will be able to tell based on joey's choices here but uh you can um suggest that He's got a couple plays that should win, getting him enough points here, including corked right here, and even a couple of other things like toad, which are very high scoring, um, along the right side of the board, overlapping that X. So a couple options here for Joey. Of course, we have a couple roadblocks. One of them is his arm, <laughs> which uh, prevents us from seeing exactly what he's likely to do. But... Um, I expect Joey to come up with a high scoring play here. Sorry, the, um, the score is not accurate. Max has 300 points right now. Score is 312 to 300. Look so, at that low score, eh? We're used to getting 600s on the feed. Oh but my gosh, is... they'll be lucky to get that together. <laughs> You're right. Chloe would beat these. Chloe would beat these two guys combined. <laughs> So I think he's setting up tees and hoops to go out. Uh, Joey yeah. has still, uh, does he have anything else that will win besides corked? Wow. He wow. just, it looks like corked and toad. And um, I don't know, maybe just the play of locked might be enough to do it just by getting the C and the K off the right. rack together and right. scoring decently. But that's key. Um, you have to get the CK off. You, you have to, because you know that Max is going out. Yeah. Either you, either you play CK 
or you score a lot of points to weather getting hit right. by the penalty of keeping CK on your rack, which of course um, I say penalty, but it's it, yeah. right. It's not I mean, possible I say, on this board. Yeah, for sure. So I think, wow, this is just brutal. And we have talked all morning about the, the mental side of Scrabble, right? So there is no question if I'm Max, the first thing I do after the game, I get out my phone, I enter in the rack that I just had with, when he played Sow and Plaids into my phone. I see, did I have a bingo to the N? No. Did I have a bingo through the V? Yes, I did. And seeing that is going to hurt a lot. And it's going to hurt. Is, he's got another game to play. Let me ask you something. If he plays something like Cove, do the math, blocking T's. So through the uh, mm. making W, O, and uh, E, L, Cove, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 15, 19, 20 points. And he's going to be up by 332. Minus. So you're saying the Cove case. right here. Yeah. Right. Right. So the idea is that is enough to win? Cove. Because he's now blocking T's. Does Max well, have something? it looks it looks oh, like that, Max will be able to play there, and he'll get enough points from the K that five point K. It feels right. almost necessary for Max to play his uh, for Joey to play his K. Either that, or he needs to score a lot of points and block this high scoring spot alongside the X. So that's and here's one thing um, we haven't mentioned, which is that we have perfect tile knowledge. Uh, oh, it's yeah. Possible. Joey might think, oh, my God, there's an M or there's there's something on Max's rack that's more than one point and I can squeak it out because I'll get six points from that one tile alone type of thing, you know. So we can't assume that he has tracked correctly. I think he found corked. I think, well, he might be playing locked here because it looks okay. like he, so playing corked. Five tiles, yeah. Yeah, Corked would leave uh, at least, I think it would leave three tiles on this rack. Yeah. So Locked is likely Joey's play, I would assume, and that is going to be enough to win him the game by the narrowest of margins as Joey moving up to 328 based on that, getting confirmation that Locked is indeed the play. And of course now for Max, realizing he's going to be getting Four points from Joey's rack. That's how we do it. Two times the point value. He needs to get 24 points on this move. And his highest scoring play is 22 points. Two, uh, two points short, Robin. I think we're going to be here for a little bit after this game because I can't imagine there won't be a recount. True. Uh, so let's try to start thinking about things to talk about because we're going to be here a little bit. But, and also we have to decide who's who we're going to watch in the last game. Uh, let oh me see while we're, while we're waiting. Let me see if we have any results from CSW. I think somebody in the chat posted that uh, Josh Castellano won his game against um, Jason Keller to make things even more of a muddle. So both divisions are still up for grabs headed into the final game. Max with a win. Oh my God. Would have clinched it. And it looks like um, we're probably seeing a challenge here for no reason other. Oh, drying. Locked. Okay. Oh, has he has he played East and Drying oh, here? Oh, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. This makes yeah. total sense. To if Drying's is a word, then so it's wins. going yeah. to win the game. So let's just say for a second that it's not challenged off the board. It would score 26 points, which would be enough for Max to win. What That's absolutely in his shoes. The right thing to do. Totally correct. The right yeah. And it comes off the board, and uh, Joey is going to be able to play out with his T and his O, potentially right here for another 11 points, making the final score 345 to 300 incredible we've got an audience well over 250 players of uh, uh, viewers i should say watching thank you so much hope you enjoyed this incredibly tight game sorry about the camera but if you've enjoyed the coverage so far great way to show your appreciation just click that like button and subscribe to the let's play chant let's play scrabble youtube channel this has been absolutely amazing games worth of content this morning, Robin.
Well, I, I would just like to point out that the bebop curse continues. <laughs> oh my God, it did, didn't it? Jeez. It did, it did, it did. So let me just give you some up to dates of what's happening in, in all the divisions. Um, Max has now lost, so he's 16 and five and like plus 1230 or something, like really, really high. Joey is now tied with him at 16. Uh, so sorry, he's at 16.6 and Joey's at 16.6, but Joey is 700 points behind in Q. Uh, the spoiler in all this, it can only be Michael Fagan who won his game against uh, Chloe Fatsis, who has had a disastrous morning. I think she's 0-3 this morning, if, I, if I'm correct. So um, Michael Fagan is also now at 16 and seven. Uh, so, oh no, he's, that's, he's at 15 and seven. So um, Max and Joey are both at 16. Michael's at 15. So the final game will have to be between Max and Joey because they're the- It's a rematch. It's going to have to be a rematch and only one of those two is going to win. But because Michael has such a huge cum over Joey, if Joey loses, Michael will go into second place and if he wins as well. So, that's so if the we situation. stick with this division, it'll be a rematch of the game we just saw to determine exactly. the victor. Awesome. In the CSW division, the situate all the games are in that are that we need to know. Adam Logan has won again. He has beaten Matthew O'Connor, 395 to 354. He has a cum of 1306. Jason Keller has lost to Joshua Castellano. He has about 450 less cum points, 452 exactly. Josh Castellano, so they're both at 16-6. So once again, those two are going to have to play each other. The only thing is who's going to come in second? Josh, again, it's a very similar situation. Josh has such a greater cum, 1633 versus Jason Keller. Those two, if Jason doesn't win, will invert positions if Josh wins and he will come in second. So we have a very equitable situation in terms of who we decide who we want to watch. Uh, I'm not sure how the producers are going to make that decision, uh, but I'm glad I don't have to make it. Yeah, either, it's In tough. either case, we get to watch Adam versus Jason. Adam Logan versus Jason Keller, two of the strong, strongest players in the world in CSW, or we get to watch Max and Joey uh, do a rematch. So we just put forth an incredible game for us to enjoy. So no wrong answer um, between those two options. I have no idea how we're going to pick. Um, I, you know, at some point we're going to drive towards a future of uh, live broadcasting where potentially we have the options of doing that. We're not there yet. I think that's going to be an amazing moment. That first stream where we can say, Hey, you want to watch this? Come, come here. You want to watch that? Go there. Um, that's going to be a great moment that uh, will be so exciting for now. Unfortunately, we'll have to pick, but either way, there is no wrong answer. Um, at least in my opinion, there is no wrong answer. Uh... I'm just writing to, to Zev. Zev has written that he wants to see uh, Adam and Jason. And I said, Zev wants CSW. It's a New Year's miracle with a heart emotion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Adam is worth the price of admission every time. Of course, Jason is a really strong player. For those that have come over from my YouTube channel, I made a video about a, a game I played with Adam with an incredibly fascinating move that he made against me seems like all my games that I've ever played with Adam Logan end up being fascinating in some way, shape, or form. And that just happens when you have somebody playing the incredible game of Scrabble at such a consistently, unbelievably high level as Adam Logan does. Jason Keller himself, one of the top players in the world for many years now. It is no surprise to see him at the top of the standings. So it's uh, if that is the decision that we make, we're going to have, and it looks like some of you guys are wanting that. Um, I think that would be a great choice. So, um, yeah. So I'm not sure if we're, it, it feels like maybe producer Josh can let us know if we want to cut to a break or if we want to just yeah. keep, keep you guys, keep you guys warm for a bit. Uh, okay. He's saying break is good. So I think what we're going to do is take a break. We're going to make that official determination of what game we watch. Either way, we're going to give you updates on what's going on in, you know, how, how are the standings shaking out? And Rob and I couldn't be more excited. I could not be more excited either. Um, 
to some extent, I almost want to not do a break. I don't want to lose the audience. Uh, I hope that doesn't happen. Um, there's just so much exciting Scrabble to come. So even if you do go for a break, please, please do come back. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we're only at 68 uh, thumbs up. We had up to 125 yesterday after I did my pledge break. I feel like I'm on uh, public TV. I see, not, I see higher. Refresh, refresh <laughs> oh. your stream. Okay, I'm going to refresh my stream yeah. because, come yeah. on, guys. I mean, this is the finals day, so it behooves us to has, have a higher like than yesterday, and we have to beat that, right? It's a new year. I see 95. Is that, are we, okay? Come on. It, it, and we're not just 100. doing it just to like, bug you. It really actually helps the algorithm and helps this uh, channel uh, attract the kind of things that channels want to attract. I, I don't, do, I don't, do, you, you know, what, what, what does it help with? Uh, yeah, it's well, going to help you know? put the stream in more people's feeds when there's a lot of people liking and sharing and doing positive interactions on the stream. More people are going to see it recommended to them to watch on YouTube. It's going to goose that algorithm in all those ways that we want as content creators. And best of all, it's just a really nice, easy way to say thank you to the amazing team at Let's Play Scrabble, Josh Green way kieran o'connor a lot of effort goes into these streams robin we just get to sit here and watch a bunch of scrabble and have a nice chat with you guys for a few hours a lot more work goes into it than that on the on the production standpoint so really really easy way to say thank you to the team behind that just clicking a couple <laughs> buttons couldn't couldn't be easier no, uh, David, you don't get a DVD of the stream if you subscribe, but you might get the America's Test Kitchen uh, cookbook. Wow, <laughs> there you go. So potential swag in, in the offing as well. So I think what we'll do is take a quick break. I'm going to guess that we're going to come back with that Adam Logan, Jason Keller matchup. But we'll decide that for sure in just a couple of minutes. Please don't go anywhere. It's going to be an epic finale here at the Albany New Year's Tournament in 2024. And if we're lucky, if, if we can get our producer to give us some updates on the scores of the uh, other game, the New Word List game, that would make it even more exciting. So hopefully they're listening in. Okay.
I f All right, we are back. With the last round here from Albany, the New Year's tournament has come down to this. It's round 23. As expected, we are sticking with the CSW matchup for the fourth time. Adam Logan versus Jason Keller. They played three times already, and this final game is going to determine all the marbles in that division. Couldn't be more excited to watch it, Robin. And it's been the best day of the year so far. <laughs> How many of those jokes did you do yesterday? Like, uh, I'm not going to have to work anymore this year. <laughs> yeah, had to get one in, of course. But uh, well, yeah, it's a brand what a, what a matchup, right? What a matchup. I mean, Adam Logan is just absolutely legendary. Uh, first one, he was playing with the North American Dictionary. Uh, just uh, And then he uh, transitioned over beautifully into world play. I think we um, were on the first world team together, if I remember correctly. Uh, him much better than I, uh, much more able to retain a lot more words. And um, now here he is. Uh, he's continuing along with uh, CSW. And in first place, uh, anyone who says that this is a young person's game, uh, not that Adam is old, but it's just when you think of all the people in their 20s who are doing so well, the Josh Sokols and the Jackson Smileys and the Chloe Fatsis and all that, um, you know, you still see an, uh, a, you know, a Joel Wapnick winning a tournament, a Joe Edley winning a tournament. So this is a game that you can continue on multiple decades into your life and still do extremely well. And then we have Jason Keller, who uh, is just so astonishing to me, you know, like he was always a, a North American player and then he switched over to Worlds and then he's just like a machine. He just wins like game after game, finds bingo after bingo. So we are gonna just have just the most spectacular game as long as there is equitability in the tiles. I've unfortunately had the experience of playing against Adam in an important game at the Canadian Championships, where even pe you know people wrote to me afterwards, going, "You had Drek. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry." And you know, and it happens. Well, what can what can you do? But we want to have an exciting game, so keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, Scrabble unfortunately is not really designed to come down to one game. This is why we play so many games at these tournaments. There is an element of luck in the tiles that you draw that does tend to even out over time. But in a one game sample, anything can happen. That's part of what makes Scrabble so fun to watch. But let's hope it doesn't rear its head as one player draws all the goodies from the bag. I think the players are set to begin with uh, well, the nameplates, we're going to fix those up shortly. But uh, Jason clearly, I think Jason going first as Adam mixing the tiles as a courtesy. But uh, we'll fix those in a bit. It's Jason Keller on your left and Adam Logan on your right. Jason going first. Let's see what he plucks out of the And I think we also to have to fix the wins and losses and, and all that. They are both at yeah. 16 and 6. Jason yep. is up 1306 to Adams 864. So, so it doesn't Josh matter. On it for sure. Hume is not an issue for the winner of the tournament. It's just the number of games. Yeah, at this point, we can kind of dispense a little bit with the uh, cumulative margin of victory, the spreads. It does end up mattering a little bit. What was both players drawing some good stuff to start? Jason, of course. Not enough vowels. He's drawn that U. He's likely to play gutty. But Adam's also drawn an S and a Z together. What are those last two tiles going to be for Adam Logan here? And it's a uh, W and an I. Okay, not perfect, but he's still going to be in pretty good shape going forward here after gutty. He's, he's got an easy zit play or zitty if he wants to set up an S hook. Yeah, for uh, sure. Probably. And uh, we, we expect those. I mean, he might play, I wonder... If he'll play Tiz, I don't know if he might play yep. that just to prevent underlapping plays. As you said, Zit taking the hooks of an I, regular word, big ZD, as well as an E in Collins. So maybe he'll play Tiz to avoid making making those hooks that allow underlaps. But uh, either way, it does feel like those are going to be his uh, top options here. Yeah, I'm I'm primar uh, pr primarily uh, an NWL player. I haven't studied these in a while, so I will be deferring to Will to point out to me all of the tricky hooks that I'm not quite aware of. I will help. I will for sure help you out with that. I guess it's you know as you meant you mentioned that ZD at least you have an S in hand if you're Adam. There's definitely yeah. an argument to be made for playing off that extra I. You get another point. You 
avoid drawing a duplicated eye. And best of all, you set up an S hook for yourself. Adam has an S. He doesn't know that Jason also has one. Um, but just to continue Jason the will point. Oh, sorry, yeah. Rob, go ahead. Jason will throw down hurls in one second. Okay, we'll see if that if I'm correct about that. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, Will. Yeah. Yeah. That, so there, I, the, I I warmed up to to your suggestion there, Robin. I was just gonna quickly say we were saying that the cumulative margin of victory doesn't really matter for who wins the tournament, but it actually uh, it does matter sort of, because the player on their tails, Josh Castellano, has a much higher cumulative margin of victory than either of these two players at close to 1600. So the, what's at stake here, the winner is going to win the tournament for sure in the Collins division. The loser could drop to third place, which is exactly. kind of, uh, it kind of hurts um, the difference uh, between those. Not, not super much, but enough to sting a little bit. If you lose, you don't even get second place. Well, and that's happened so many times when you've, uh, I've even seen people drop to fourth or some, you know, even fifth place sometimes. And it's such a killer when you had the opportunity to win the tournament and then your loss causes you to just sink down in the prize pool. So it does happen. And here comes Hurls as expected. It, it does set up at least a C hook as that, uh, that I'm aware of. And a T. That's an NWL. And a T. Sure. Yeah, there you go. But uh, neither of those on Adam's rack. So... Yeah, Adam's got that, um, he had that W, and he's drawn an N and a G, but this is kind of a lesson in the G, right? Like, as long as you yeah. don't have an I to go with right. it, the G feels a little more like clunk than something right. useful to you. So right. Adam's going to have to work through that. It's not really clear to me what he'll do. I think it seems possible that he's going to overlap the Z somehow. Um, whether he chooses to play went uh, with the pronoun Zay there or whether right. he tries to get rid of all of his clunky stuff with something like Wenj or Ngui. That is the, the NWL alternative, another currency word, I believe. But uh, a couple different options that are all very close for Adam revolving around that Z spot. Another possibility is to play newly saving a spot uh an open end for his g that he would save on his rack that's true it would be nice to play that and then pluck an i and pair it with that end to play an ing word but then of course if you manage not to draw an i and of course where is it when you need it right when you don't need it you can get three in a row and when you <laughs> do it's nowhere to be found <sighs> somebody up at, you know, somebody up in the heavens is like pulling strings and making us like squirm but <laughs> that's scrabble though yeah that's scrabble that's scrabble um i'm looking at jason's rack in uh nwl the only bingo through that is through a q a corin but in csw uh you have a french word which is du douanier um, and uh, he does not have either, and he will not receive either. So he will not be bingoing on the next turn. Which is a big swing, too, because without either of those letters, Jason's rack is really unappealing. You've got these kind of low point letters that are mostly vowels, which means you're going to really struggle to score very well. Um, I don't really see that he's likely to have a play that's very satisfying on his next move. I suppose it's possible that after, if Adam really does play this strange, I don't think that many wor words, Robin, start with NGW <laughs> as their <laughs> first three letters, but we may be about to see a word like that get played here. And it looks like that's going to happen. This might allow Jason to play something more productive, overlapping the... Um, the letters yeah. that were just placed out in space. That's the trouble with the one pointers. And we all are very aware of this, that you have these, you know, A-E-I-N-R is like the beginning of a fantastic stem rack. And so like the, you might want to get rid of O-U, for example, and hold on to the rest and just pray you don't get another vowel or get rid of O-U-I uh, type of situation, but you're not going to be scoring a lot. So do you want to um, bust up your rack and play as many as possible? Uh, or do you want to try to um, work your way into a, a really complete rack if you pick up a T and a S or something like that? So it's a, it's a difficult situation to know what to do, and you know, 
Um, and I think it's just a constant struggle to know what to do with one tile racks. Yeah, for sure. That is absolutely true. Um, I would say, though, that very deceptively here, there actually is a really high scoring play to the Y of Gutty that makes all NWO words, by the way, ownery in that spot, making wo, E, N, and Z, E, E, nice. the phonetic spelling of, of the Z. Well, I guess Z would be the spelling of the Z. But um, either way, 40 points for dumping four one-point tiles wow. available to Jason here. Very surprising, but you're getting so many nice overlaps, and you're getting points from the W, the Z, and the Y that it does add up quickly. That looks like a really strong option for him here. The only drawback, it would leave three vowels on his rack. That and, it, and one of them being the U. Uh, Although with two U's unseen, uh, already seen early in the game, it's just like me, for example, to pick the Q after getting rid of the third U. But uh, I can't believe he wouldn't see it. Um, but I, it doesn't look like he's looking to play that. He might be, um, I mean, it is very tempting to play uh, next to that W because you're, you are going to score quite a bit with your one pointers by going in both directions. I'm not entirely sure what he's thinking of. Oh, he spotted it now. Very nicely done by Jason. It looked oh, like yeah. he was getting ready to play Aura in that spot. So close. Right. And Aura would score 30 and have the benefit of leaving one consonant. But he has spotted a very difficult and very impressive find there yes. by Jason. That is not an everyday play to spot. You have to think a little bit harder to even consider it, given that it it uses both of your two consonants, but well yes. worth doing in his shoes here to score so well. And meanwhile, Adam drew five vowels after his previous play of Ngui, leaving LS on his rack, Robin. Not what either player is after here no. to start. And you know what? We were uh, always were worried about having a blowout game in the final. Uh, what we're having is a um, both players having equally you know pretty bad racks uh, that they're going to have to play through. And very often in games like this, I mean, I've never seen a game that started. I've rarely seen a game that started with a five, you know, a four point start, you know, like OE or, you know, something like that, that didn't finish with 500 points. So I think at some point this, <laughs> yes. this game is going to explode at some point. I, this is my prediction. We'll see. Well, yeah, if it does explode, then the nice thing is that the players have been working through a lot of the clunky letters to start the game. So all of the good ones are destined to come out at some point, um, clearly. And uh, it looks like Adam is going to be forced to use up his S if he wants to score well. I think it's a pretty reasonable play here. Yes. A play like Aloe's scoring so much better than any of his other options here. Makes a, a good deal of sense to me. Um, there is a standout play here that is a Collins only word. It doesn't look like Jason's seen it yet, but ribo, however you would say that. I'm not sure if it's of French origin, ribaud, R I B A U D, would play down from the R of hurls here, and it would leave him with just O W on his rack, getting rid of a lot of clunk. That feels like it is a long shot better than any other option here, but it does look like Jason's getting ready to play wad parallel to Allos. Yeah. Um, which is still a pretty solid score, but it would leave B I O U instead of an extra two points leaving just O W. So I think a, a pretty big difference between those plays. I know Jason knows this word. It's just a matter of him considering the R of hurls and looking for a minute to try and see it. There's no way he doesn't know it. His word knowledge is so prodigious, but it feels like he's about to potentially miss it here. Well, there's also uh, the possibility of playing W-A-I-D to the right of Allos. Now I know that you want to du double your W, but it will get rid of one more tile. And uh, I have. can you tell me the, the score difference? I would have to add it up quickly, but uh, it would so, solve that. Yeah, W-A-I-D. 
WAID would be 30 points. So you would take a four point sacrifice to get rid of an extra vowel, which seems steep. But when you have so many extra vowels, it actually is incredibly useful to get rid of each subsequent one. If you're going down from three vowels, one consonant to two vowels, one consonant as a leave, it is a difference that a four yeah. point gap in score feels roughly potentially worth that sacrifice. So yeah. good, good spot, Robin. That could definitely be a strong choice for him. Looks like he's considering Wadi. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe he just has those tiles set up because he is considering your choice of WAID up there. Well, then he would put WAID on his rack, so I don't think he is. Um, He's getting a bit of a brain fart for Rebo, which, I, as I, as you said, his his knowledge is so great. Uh, even though it's a six and not a seven, he'll know Rebo's, which is an anagram of sub-arid. Um, so uh, just uh, it's either a dis I, I, he hasn't put it on his rack. Um, he may not want to open the board for Adam, who is clearly struggling with vowels. Um, Wood does create the Y hook, uh, but you would have to make a five letter word starting with Y at least. Um, and you would have to have that Y and there's only one Y left. So a bit of a safe play. And Adam has just played an S and it looks like he wasn't undoubling S's. It looked like he was untripling vowels. So I don't think he could read into it that Adam now can make a four letter word ending in woods from that. Yeah. And you can see he's shaking his head a little bit because that spot looks so appealing to play to that triple word score, but his letters are just not quite good enough. He only has one letter, well, I guess two with the S, that hook L-A. So <laughs> L-A-E is not a word. L-A-O is not a word. There's really no great way for him to block that spot. And I wonder if he's seriously considering just playing S-E-C, making awe and lack. If he plays sec in that top corner because he thinks that Jason is setting up his Y or something like that, that would be the type of paranoia that I myself yeah. played against Adam in, in okay, he's not going to do that. He's decided to play what I think is his best play of just G I agree. off of hurls. I mean, if you're going to, you know, here's one of our little rules in Scrabble uh, that may, doesn't always apply, but it applies a lot of the time is that if your opponent has just set up something extremely dangerous, then set up something, you know, quite dangerous that you can benefit from uh, in a totally different part of the board and they can't get to both. And he saved an O when he did that. Um, and um, uh, he did not save an A to play Aji, but he did save, uh, unless it's he, and I keep pronouncing the J incorrectly for Spanish words, but I do believe it's G. Uh, so this is what he's done. He's, he's untripled his E's. He's gotten rid of the J. He set up an O hook. And, um, you know, so everything about that I liked. Me too. I think it makes total sense. Um, he is so close. Adam is, they're both players really. Jason and Adam are both inching their way closer to a bingo. Jason now has ING on his rack, although it looks like he has spotted a really nice scoring play of Rubigo. But instead, he's going to go a different direction. I'm surprised by this. He had Rubigo set up on his rack, ready to go down from the R of Hurls, but he's opted to play Bungie for the same score, keeping OG instead of EN. That's kind of a surprise, Robin. Uh, and it's not a surprise to me at all. Look who you're playing. You're playing Adam Logan, who has just, you know, so many years of experience and so much word knowledge you're scoring the same amount you're not opening the board you're not allowing him to score points uh off uh, make an a a g word or off the jo i i think it was really a, a good choice personally interesting so yeah that underlapping spot with the j it is pretty useful to take that out from jason's pov i just worry that the cost of leaving the O and G together instead of that nice EN combination will sometimes be quite high. But it turns right. out that Jason has drawn beautifully after Bungie and he is pretty likely to have something or other, I would think. I'm not seeing it just yet, but I feel like he is quite likely to have something available here um, on his next turn with that blank. I see, I, I see Godish and I see Goliath. I don't know if there's anything else in Collins. 
Yeah, Goliath doesn't appear to fit. I wonder what is what does he have here? I mean, it certainly looks great from his point of view. Um, I really oh, don't he, know that he has anything. He has Nathion to the Nathion. end. In Gui, <laughs> which is that is way off the beaten path. Frankly, I would consider playing Oath and a G over Nathion here, but maybe, maybe there's or maybe something like Righto. Yeah, he's got that lined up on his rack. Righto from the R of Hurls, scoring 36 points, leaving A blank, is probably about as strong as Nathion to the N of Ngui. Yeah. So. A lot of good options for Jason here. You know what? If IE was a word, because there's so many e, e, you know, EE e and OE and all that, he would have had goatish to the left of Bungie. Yes, and that would be Thick. just gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, that is so close to fitting with all those overlaps. Um, but over to Adam, he has been struggling with vowels um, for a couple turns now. He had to take a slightly subpar score in G because he just didn't have any way to use the triple word scores on the right side of the board. And again, he has a similar choice to the choice he's been facing for a couple turns now. He's had S's on his rack, but he has no great way of scoring a lot of points without using the S. Maybe he's going to play Corb. C-O-R-B-E. I believe that's a Collins only word that plays through the B of Bungie that would have the benefit of setting up his S. But other than that, I'm not sure. He could just play our through the U of Hurls and keep a really, really good I like that. Rack. I, I love that's, that. I think that's that seems great. potentially worth it. Yeah. And it, it stops the uh, G hook as well. True. That's true. But it makes it a bit more of a difficult, I mean, CS uh, core score. I mean, it's such a strong, strong leave. He'll um, get a lot of bingos hooking woods with that too. A lot of the words exactly. he'll draw will play yeah. down for a boatload of points there. So curious to see what's going to happen because yeah, he's looking at Adams he's got looking it, at Rex got it. To, yeah, yeah. That Which would I score think there's a lot 42. To be said to that as well. Yeah. yeah, it scores 42. If you think there's any chance that Jason had a Y when he played Wad and he's trying to set it up, which I feel like you can probably discard that possibility now because he almost certainly would have played that Y on his previous move with Bungie. It seems hard to believe he wouldn't have a better play up there. Maybe somehow that's possible, but oh, now he's considering scorer. No, 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 no. Rex is better. I know you don't want to save the 2E, but you score so much more. I'm, uh, I'm assuming he would be playing it off of wood. Yeah, maybe. I think so. Yeah. Seems I like that's where he's going four. here. Really, eh? He's going to give up the points. Okay. There are a lot 30. of options on this turn. So many similar choices here, whether it's O-U-R through the U of Hurls, keeping the best bingo leave you possibly can, Corb for 27 through the B of Bungie. Looks like a nice intermediate option. Scoring 27, leaving ORS, which is a pretty good bingo leave. Not as good as keeping the E, but still solid. And then the plays that you pointed out, Robin, of Rex in that RE RECS in that upper right corner that would max out your score and be very defensive as well. Right, so let's... He's going to play score, scorer. Wow. So he's going for the blanks. Um, otherwise, I would have saved OR personally, but I, I love R, so that's, you know, that's a, that's a personal uh, bias on my part. He's, uh, to me, he's going for blanks. Yeah, and, the R's uh, and, and probably just trying to, yeah, as you said, burn through tiles and maybe just avoid leaving duplicates of any kind. Rex would have left... O O R, which this avoids leaving the duplicate O's. Tough one. That's a really tough move. A lot of moves were super close. I feel like I would have been fine with almost any other move that we mentioned other than this, which this feels like maybe a slight overreaction to try to get blanks with some other moves that would have led to better chances of bingoing or higher scores. Yeah. Did you like Rex? I, I think I personally would have played Rex. Oh, he found it. I did. It. I, 
Oh, very nice. So Nathion, the only bingo available on this turn. Jason spots it. The interesting thing about this is it's going to give a gigantic comeback along the top. He's going to be able to. Yeah. He's going to be able to play yeah. E A U X for an enormous score, which is kind of a godsend given all these vowels. Adam's going to play this. Yeah. I would expect nearly instantaneously. So it's even though. Let's be clear. This is an extremely impressive play by Jason Keller. Um, it is, there is a, a reasonable argument to be made that uh, playing right O or something other than this might have worked out a little bit better. Certainly in this scenario, it would have. But yeah, but he's going to bingo back. Look case. at this. He's going to bingo right back. Wow. True. Oh, man. Adam's draw here is going to be really important. He's only down by 18 points heading into this move. There's Jason is definitely going to bingo in response. I would be shocked if he does not spot a couple different options that he has available. And Adam's draw is going to go a long way to determining whether this game is still close. And that's not the best <laughs> draw for Adam. He's got Scolion off HE, I think is the safest rather than off Bungie. Yeah, Scorion for sure. That would Scolion would score seventy six off of H E. He could get a few more points by playing. Oh, he's it gonna play he's it there. About to. He gets play three Quasar more. There. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Adam shakes his head. That is definitely a tough blow for Adam. The game is far from over, though. Adam should be able to score decently with his F and but his D. But he didn't. He he picked a bingo right out of the rack. A, a, a bonus right out of the rack, and he didn't play the blank. So, that like, is that admittedly is extremely ominous. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Um, and I think Adam is probably disappointed as well because he hoped to play fobbed through the B of Bungie, and that play has now been blocked as well. Right. So, right. Um, not <gasps> did ideal. not pick the blank. He did not pick the blank, and he did well, he pick saddled a K. with a K. saddled with the Q. Uh, well, that Q no, is close to scoring a boatload alongside Clausson yeah. there, but it's not quite. He doesn't have an eye for Chi, and cat tob is not a word. There's a lot to be said. There's three, uh, four eyes unseen. There's a lot to be said for not playing cat to the left of Bungie and setting up an S hook uh, for the blank, I guess. Uh, there's a lot to be said for just playing your other tiles and going for that eye and. Um, and uh, is there an N? Yeah, and one N. Kid, that would be even better. Oh, but that, here you go. T uh, play off everything except the Q and the, uh, oh, you, um, you don't, yeah, and go for the I and the N. Keep the K then to pay, play Knob, K-N-O-B, coming the other way. That, like if you're... <laughs> <laughs> that would be the mother of all setups right there. If So I think, are there, I think there is an, and even after Adam just played that one, I think that was the fifth one. So it would be possible to draw the sixth and final end to make these incredible Q setups that you're describing, <laughs> Robin. That would be <laughs> awesome. Uh, meanwhile, Adam's play of Roband looking pretty good. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. That's a tremendous play. I didn't even see that spot for jason he plays 52 i think for a massive score there and adam draws 50. terribly look at that draw for adam he knows it's over i think he knows it's over now yeah that's brutal draw for adam he left an f what did he leave f e on his rack and he drew p p v i r and yeah you can tell from his body language he immediately knows how dire of a draw that is now and, and also, just looking at the standings, if Josh Castellano wins, he's got an even higher cum. He's got the highest cum of the tournament at 1633. Josh will then move into second place if he, um, yes, he has to win in order to go into second place. Yeah, it's definitely contingent on Castellano winning for if he's going to pass the loser of this game. But uh, certainly looks like Jason is firmly in the driver's seat with Ad. I mean, Jason has a pretty bad set of tiles himself, but he must be thrilled to see the second oh, blank, the blank on his rack. Absolutely. It is just Absolutely. a soothing feeling in his shoes, seeing that blank. Not so much that you have a great play with it right now, but knowing that Adam does not have it and is not about to hit 
Jason with it is a really good feeling from his perspective. And, and we do have one uh, final game in Matthew O'Connor, uh, obviously very quickly against um, Ben Schoenbrunn, and he won 482 to 301. So he obviously just dominated that game. So he's finishing at 149, 1141. So we'll see where he ends up when this is all over. And a really interesting play here. This is a genius play. Wow, it sets up the team. Yeah. Now, of course, leaving F-E-V yeah. <laughs> along with the P is not what he's after at all. Ugh. But just making a spot that's kind of annoying to deal with for Jason is a great idea for Adam here. Now, Jason has to worry that Adam has the other P setting up prob, which he does. He doesn't have anything super strong he's, with it. P-I-S. I mean, just undouble your T. You're way ahead, 100 points. I don't know. That's you a could, consideration. You certainly, I mean, you could you could also play robot as well, something like that. Yeah, would, yeah. But why would, would you good. get rid of your own spell, right? Yeah, that's true. So that I mean, there's probably some other ways of blocking this. You could try to play something through the I of Bungie, maybe. Maybe through the E is enough. Man, I, this is I, actually it's just such a genius play by Adam to make Jason think a little bit harder about a tricky situation, non-traditional situation, and sort of throw him off a little bit. Maybe he'll misplay this situation somehow, um, and uh, make an opening for Adam to play some really big scoring play with his P, and then from Adam's POV, yeah. he could follow it up with a blank draw. I like what Alec awesome. has said, uh, play KIS and fish for mattoids through the A as a possibility. Oh, yeah, that's going to hit a lot because you can see from Jason's perspective, I believe it's updated, that mattoids through the A of Roband, if Jason just plays off his K and draws any of the I, well, I guess it would just be the eyes that he could draw. So just the it's, eye. Not, yeah. it's not that super likely, but at least three out of 20 unseen tiles are eyes. And we know that none of them are on Adam's rack. So could be worth doing. I think he you might really be tempted to just ignore the spot completely. He, he might just say, uh, well, look, the, the biggest mistake I could make is to sacrifice too many points here. And let's say I play keys for seven and Adam bingos with a natural somewhere for 80. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden. Yeah. And then I pick the P. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there are definitely ways to go wrong by blocking this for too low of a score. So I could see Jason just say, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to overreact to this. I'm going to play something like I normally would. Not a hundred percent sure what that is. Maybe like, Mott parallel to Bungie, like M O T T. I don't even know. He doesn't. Uh, I guess uh, the thing is, he doesn't have a very good play elsewhere. So maybe it is okay for him to block exactly. the spot now. Yeah, good point. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, what do you need another 18 points for when you're potentially giving away, you know, 60 plus? Um, do something to block that spot. That's. I think. I. I think the paranoia is is well placed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, given that a, a bingo in that spot sufficiently, even a normal scoring bingo in that spot is going to tip the scales close to 100 points, which is exactly what Jason cannot withstand here. So he And you don't see easily... Adam thinking. Look, Adam's not thinking. Adam's not like... <laughs> True. And <gasps> Jason is just going to go ahead and ignore the spot completely. Now, is there any chance that Jason is not thinking about the p-hook here because this what if jason bricks his draw here with something terrible and adam draws something high scoring because this play by adam scores extremely well 66 points he's really close on the scoreboard again and jason just blocked the a that he probably badly needs to play a lot yes. of bingos with all those consonants I so this could be, yeah. this is, br this is just brilliant by Adam to even give himself any chance at all. Let's see what he draws. Come on, get a vowel, Adam. Okay. Family T. 
Wow. Okay. This there is a Collins bingo a nice through rest. the E. Through an E, you would have femality. That is a valid word. It doesn't seem to play anywhere here, but it just goes to show you that Adam is so close here. He actually is close enough on the scoreboard that if he's able to score a lot of points somewhere, he's looking at making this a tight end game without even having bingoed. Exactly. Exactly. That's an incredible. I would love to talk to Jason afterwards what his thinking was because not only did he not block the P hook, but he also, with only one vowel on his rack, in order just to balance it, blocked his best place to bingo. So, uh, and he had the blank. So, uh, better minds than mine. Let, let, let me put it that way. I, I, I don't know. So, Jason just plays Femme for only 16 points, which I think the nice oh. thing about this play is that it gets in the way of a G plays, right? Like Adam could easily have some really high scoring overlaps alongside G with his A. And this play gets a lot of those, a lot of the sting out of it. But as we can see, Jason drew two vowels after that play. And that is going to make things very difficult on Adam as what? Jason likely has bingos all over the board now. Well, I don't know. Like, if he plays something like uh, daftly, I think he blocks a lot of stuff unless there's, because he's that got be... bingos off score. Yeah, he has dilation yeah. through the L of, of Clauston up at the top of the board. Oh, Jason no, so does. that's it. It's done. It's over. So he's got, so he's got the D. He... Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's got bingos in a bunch of places, and Adam is going to be hard pressed to block them all. No, he can't. From Adam's perspective, yeah, so it, it, it will be it will be impossible, as you as you say. But from Adam's POV, I just wonder if he can tell from Jason's last few plays that Jason has the blank, or is he playing? What 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 can you infer from Jason's plays of cat and femme? That he has the Is blank. He's not going yeah, for the see, blank. It, it seems like 100%. that, right? Like he's yeah, only 100%. played two tiles per turn. So if you're Adam, you're sitting there saying, why is my opponent playing two tiles per turn with a blank unseen and seemingly unconcerned with blocking any areas of the board? Um, so, exactly. well, I mean, cat blocks a little, but yeah. So I would, I guess... I don't know what you do with that information if you're Adam. I think well, that's your and also that your opponent has a lot of consonants, right? He's consonant yes. heavy. He's played KFM, and he's got the blank. He's just trying to draw a couple of vowels. That's all he needs, and he's going to win the game. That's and that's that's what I would infer. Yeah. So I just don't. It's hard to see what Adam can do here to try to engineer a winning situation where it's pretty likely, likely that your opponent has the blank and you can't really get close enough on the scoreboard to set up a situation where maybe you can draw a bingo to counter Jason's, right? So there are four tiles in the bag. If Adam could just get close enough on the scoreboard to be able to draw a bingo that scores similarly or greater to Jason's right. potential bingo, you might be able to steal this. But I'm not seeing a great way to accomplish that goal that's a really really good point um i don't think that jason has anything off the d or to the d that would give him a triple worst word score so i think i just i see addition i don't know if there's other ones uh, he does have things like nidation which will score more and he could score to the left of scorer um which would only oh, there's a great there's a great chat suggestion of maybe Adam can set up a situation of V sticking Jason. Right. That could be, that might be the, a possible outside chance of pulling this off. If you can set it <laughs> up so there's only one tile in the bag and you avoid the V, Jason bingos <laughs> and draws the V, maybe you can do enough creative stuff with those high scoring letters to pull away in that end game after that. That would be amazing to see that happen. Got to worry about Adam's clock time, of course. And also, I haven't really looked at the board closely enough to see whether there are any V spots, but it doesn't look like there are. I, I see something really pretty for Adam that if he just plays off the M and picks an I, and Jason doesn't play around there, he's got finality under cat. Oh, very nice. 
Yeah, he could. Maybe he'll go for that. That seems as plausible as anything through that N. Yeah, that's definitely what he's thinking. Very nicely spotted, Robin. Um, that's With clearly that what he's thinking. Let's see what oh, he happens did that. here. Wow. wow. Yeah, he did I it. Like so. Adam. I finally thought like Adam. It's a good. Feeling it's good. a good feeling. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> and hard to do. So there it is. Look at that. So where is Jason going to bingo? Um, I guess he'll probably play oh anno God. anoint. He'll probably play anointed through the this end like of Roban and ruin ruin okay. this beautiful suggestion that you made i think that's what i would expect jason to play here anointed through the end but if he plays anywhere else adam will bingo with finality unfortunately given the score gap right now it doesn't look like it's going to be enough but man imagine being in adam's shoes right now if you can just avoid yeah. jason bingoing for one more turn you might be able to steal this oh it that that hope he must be feeling it's going to be dashed momentarily yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense for him to play delation or, you know, anything through that L. It makes a lot more sense to, um, yeah, to block most the, the two areas uh, to the right, lower right quadrant. It makes the most sense. And anointed scores a ton. And yeah, it's plenty. <gasps> but Keep in mind, too, that with three tiles in the bag, the stick possibility is no longer there. If the V is accompanied by pretty much any other combination, of tiles in the bag maybe it's possible that jason could draw like the f d or something that might make it difficult for him to play the v in the end game right um, but barring draws like that any kind of pairing of the v and a vowel or something like that should very very likely be enough to allow him to play off the v and uh that's pretty likely to do it um for, for Jason. So what well, actually that, is in the bag here? We uh, can there's figure. three tiles left, but you're not suggesting that he, are you suggesting he not bingo? No, I, I think you have to bingo here. I'm just imagining what he could be doing from the bookkeeping perspective, right? He's looking at okay, his tracking, after, he's yeah, trying to, yeah. I think, I think given how close the score is and given the fact that the unseen tiles are pretty good for bingos, Jason has to bingo now. Because if he doesn't, yes. he could sorely regret it if Adam has a bingo. And that is actually fairly likely, given the good tiles in the pool. So no suggestion that Jason pass up a bingo. For sure, he needs to play one. He's probably trying to figure out what is the worst possible draw that I can get from the bag. Can I get stuck? What happens to me when I get stuck? Because the tournament is riding on it. Totally agree with what you're saying, but if he plays like anointed and how many points he's going to get, like 75 or something like that, um, putting at 460 ish, 470, and Adam's down 115, how is he possibly going to worry about a V hook, a V stick? Well, just to, I mean, imagine plays <laughs> that you could make, for example, through the L of Clausson that maybe set up a gigantic play to the triple, for example. I know you wouldn't play okay. this with a, okay. with a V, so something like. You couldn't play this because vil is a word, but pretend vil wasn't a word, <laughs> right? You could play ILL -L there, and then maybe you play something down to the triple that scores like 70 points or something. Like, yeah. Right? Like you could make um, up points wow. in a hurry yeah. with, a, with a play like that. Um, I, I actually agree with you, though, that Jason would likely be up by so many points that not even yeah. a play like that would, would end up working. But there's definitely creative ways that you could threaten some scary stuff. Like you would need something like um, a very legendary play by Stephen Fisher from the Montreal Club where he played Nana one away from the double letter score going down to the triple and picked up, you know, Ejecta and Janana. Um, Beautiful. That's something like that. Exactly. Yeah. That that would be what you're looking for um, in Adam's shoes. Um, Austin Shin in the chat. Nice to see you, Austin. My co-commentator earlier said that ladyfied is a possibility for Adam to hold from Jason's POV. Jason, mm. if, if Adam has L-A-D-Y-F-I-E, it would play to the D of Roband for a gigantic score. So that is And he can't play anointed. He couldn't play anointed then because K-A-E 
would be uh, the hook. Oh, yeah, exactly. So that it would also force Jason to eat the V oh, yeah. as well. So it's actually starting to get pretty close. I'm so curious now. What happens if that occurs? I'm just going to write it in and just Nidation see. Lady Fied, Lady Fied would score 117 points, and it would get Adam an extra 12 points from Jason's rack. And Jason would actually lose. Adam would win the game if he had ladyfied on his rack. And donation won't block it either. Donation won't block it either. Oh my God. So <laughs> there, even a bingo here is not 100% to win from Jason's standpoint. Nicely spotted indeed. Unfortunately for us, we won't have any kind of fireworks like that. We're very likely to see Jason bingo and block Adam's own bingo and our our eventual end game is going to be mostly uninteresting as there's Nidation and Adam size a little bit, almost imperceptible on Adam's part. He just let out a little sigh knowing that uh, that's going to be it for him in this game. What an effort, though, by both players, Robin. It's been a very exciting game to follow. Oh, he's, he's challenging it. He knows it's good, but he, you know, yeah. it's it's what you do. You, if yep. you have to do it on the on the slight chance that one of your brain cells died somewhere during the weekend and and you're yeah. remembering something through. Yeah. Of course yeah, we, we know, know this is a yeah. valid word. Both of these players know it. Um, but Adam is doing his what what is incumbent on him. There's no way he can win if this word is on. I don't know if it would be a brain cell dying. It feels like <laughs> I don't know. It would, be, it would be like a brain cell, a, a stray brain cell that doesn't belong, That's it. like yeah. like an interloper, so a memory, a memory blip or something. Yes. Know, like, yeah. Um, Who knows? Yeah, you know, whatever. Ale uh, somebody's saying in the chat that it's hard to believe that a bingo like this so late in the game would be a loser. But we talked about that yesterday, where uh, David Boys had uh, la uh, a ladybug uh, along the triple to uh, during the World Championship, but saw that it might give a triple triple to his opponent and didn't play it. So, uh, so much to think. This is what makes Scrabble so incredibly compelling. Oh, it's VED. Somebody had pred predicted that. So he's got Dev to the left of Scorer and veld through the l so yeah not an issue yep no worries there a couple good plays for jason to go out with those letters so deva through the a to the a i mean there's just no shortage when you're meant to win something and you pick a v late in the game and you can find three places without thinking to play it you know you're meant to win the game very true um i think making things easier for Adam in this end game is that Jason is also threatening vend through the end of Nidation. So I eventually expect Adam sure. to play FY in the lower corner, which already scores a boatload of points, but it also blocks Jason's best play. And we're sure. going to see the uh, end of this game in short order. And it's going to be Jason Keller adding another win to his decorated tournament career. Adam Logan getting as close as you can get to pulling off an amazing comeback in this game, an amazing uh, tournament win of his own. And frankly, it's hard. I would be hard pressed to come up with too many people with a more decorated record than Adams with a world championship, multiple Canadian championships, five yeah. to his name, a U.S. championship in both the NWL and CSW divisions. Um, Adam is going to be just fine uh, coming in second or third in this tournament, but uh, pretty amazing performance here by both players. It's been a lot of fun, Robin. Would you like a little news from the other tournament? <laughs> Uh, at this point, um, not yet. Maybe you want to just keep stay with I, this? I don't know. Yeah, we'll stick with this. I mean, is there any news from that we can put in the chat? Or okay, producer Josh says it's all no, good. No. We can share it's all some good. of the. I think okay. we can share some other results. So in the other division, Max Panich, who was in first place and in danger of falling to third place, has done exactly that, and we have, ladies and gentlemen, a new bride. Joey Malik, no longer the bridesmaid, has wow. defeated, <laughs> defeated Max Panich, 434 to 385, to finish at 176 plus 660, 633. And Michael Fagan, 
beat Jonathan Lynn 507362 to go ahead of Max Panitch with a spread of 1339 to Max's 1162, two of the highest cumes in the tournament. And 1162 was not enough to secure second place. Unbelievable. Crazy. Congratulations to Joey. Of course, one of the top players in North America for several decades, our second place finisher behind Josh Sokol at the national championship this year. And um, we're going to, we're about to see Jason clinch this thing with his top scoring play of Veld. So it sounds like our champions this year, Jason Keller in our Collins division and Joey Malik in NWL, not really too surprised by either of those Robin. Not, not a good day for Canadians. So I'm hoping that uh, that will be made up, but the difference will be made up in the uh, junior hockey uh, tournament, but uh, very, very thrilled for both of these fine, fine gentlemen, all four of them, uh, all six of them, um, they happen to be men in the, in the top three uh, are just such worthy, worthy winners. And it was just a matter of, uh, you know, um, Jason, I don't know. Nidation ended up winning it, but was it the right play when Lady Fied was a threat? Uh, and uh, was that just a lucky way, you know, that he, he got away with it? So um, both of them played just absolutely beautiful. Somebody questioned, should Adam, rather than going for finality, have fished for Lady Fied? And there's a lot to be said for that, uh, it's because it was completely unblockable by Jason if he was going to bingo around the K and the T. Uh, that would have been a, a, a next level of thought that I don't know that he had the time to figure out. So, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm thrilled that we just got such great games and I'm thrilled that we were able to bring such great games to a huge audience. I think we're pushing 300 at this point. Yeah, really a huge thanks to everybody that's watched over the course of several days. Of course, I've only been on commentary for just a little bit. Robin, you did a chunk yesterday. Other commentators throughout, we had uh, Nitz and Charles Renke and uh, Matt Kanick and Austin Shin. Jeffrey Pogue, everybody that chipped in commentary, thank you. Um, and of course, huge thank you. Again, we've said it a bunch of times and can't really say it enough to all the staff at Let's Play Scrabble behind the scenes for making this tournament a reality, making this stream a reality. Oh, forgot Jared Capel, of course, one of my favorite, your co-commentator, Robin, Jared, one of my Yesterday, favorite Scrabble yes. players. Um, so uh, huge thanks to all the staff and other commentators who have chipped in to make this stream happen. Um, again, we know a lot of you already have done so, but a simple, easy way to show your appreciation and show your thanks Click that sub button on the Let's Play Scrabble channel. This is far from the last stream of this type that you're going to see in 2024. The next one coming up, the Canadian Scrabble Classic in early March. And there's going to be plenty of content coming to the channel in the interim. Probably lots more events over the course of the year. So it's a great way to support the channel and make sure you don't miss any of that content. And yeah, what am I forgetting, Robin? Any other thank yous to distribute? Sure. sure. Um, remember, the next tournament is in March from, from Josh and Kieran from the Let's Play Scrabble that, uh, uh, as, as, as uh, Will said, please subscribe to it so that you don't miss anything. Even though the next tournament's not till March, uh, there's going to be plenty of content on the channel, so please keep checking back. Uh, Will is a little shy to say it about himself, but uh, he is widely, widely considered to have one of the best Scrabble channels uh, that exists in the universe. So please go and have a look at his. How is it easy to find, Will? What is the uh, URL? It's, um, it, it's, uh, it's been on the screen a couple times when we cut back to the, oh, there we go. There, there it, it is. is there at Wanderer 15. I chose that name when I was 15 years old and I'm not about to change it now. So if you want to go over to YouTube at Wanderer 15, I got lots of Scrabble content there and I plan on continuing to churn it out. I know a lot of you potentially are coming over from that channel and I really appreciate it. So yeah. Um, why did you Why did you choose Wanderer when, when it, W Ander? Like why did you add the ER onto it? Oh, I don't know. I just, um, I just because my name spells wander and I just thought that rolling with that motif would be a good idea. Again, I got to say the ideas you have when you're 15 years old, don't always <laughs> hold up into adulthood, but I'm sticking with it. No change in the offing for me. So, um, 
anyway, I think that about does it for us. I'm not sure if there's any ch- plan to stream award ceremony or anything like that. I'm imagining probably not. So I think that's going to do it for us, Robin. Any final thoughts before we sign off from the Albany New Year's Tournament 2024 edition? Uh, one administrative thing is if you haven't liked this um, video yet, please now is your chance to do it. If you have not signed up to uh, subscribe to Let's Play Scrabble, please do so so that you don't miss out on anything. Um, I was not able to come to this tournament, same as you, uh, 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 Will, for your reasons, my reasons. Hate I to miss it. Trips. Yeah. I had two trips. Uh, you know, uh, I was in the car pretty much for like 40 hours in the last three weeks. So, uh, and I also have three cats that, um, you know, my younger son, uh, God bless him, we always uh, saddled him with cat sitting and we, we thought, you know, like th- three times in, in a month or a month and a half is too much. So we didn't come to it. So when I got invited to do this, I was absolutely thrilled to be a part of the tournament without actually being there. Um, but I think you can see from just how fantastic the competition was and how happy everybody is that this was such a well-run tournament. And so if you can get yourselves out to any of these tournaments, um, you can also go to crosstables.com and you can see all the upcoming tournaments from all the different places. There's one coming up in um, in other parts of the world, but uh, of course I have favorites with uh, Josh and Kieran because I just love how they run everything and I love the after hours stuff and all that. So if you're afraid to um, join Scrabble because you just saw all these crazy words, as we've told you over and over again, you can play Scrabble at all sorts of levels. It's really all about just having a pastime that is so emotionally challenging and and intellectually challenging, an opportunity to create a new family um, and to, um, you know, I mean, what do I do in my off time? I'm just constantly playing Woogles. I'm constantly studying on Aerolith. It gives me something to do and it makes it easy for people to buy me presents because they know I have this great hobby. (laughs) Very (laughs) true, yeah. There's no doubt. Yeah, def- so just a pleasure. definitely. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to echo no, ahead, that. It's ahead. it's like the best decision. One of the best decisions I've ever made is to try out competitive Scrabble. So for anybody on the fence, I want to echo everything Robin said. It truly is a great hobby. And if you're curious, um, going to letsplayscrabble.com is a great place to start for some resources to find out where you can play with and other events at all levels uh run by this amazing team and of course there are also tournaments all over the country pretty much wherever you're from so um didn't mean to to steal your thunder there robin as we get the plug at the bottom of the screen but uh yeah sorry i'll let you have the last word as we sign off here from the commentary booth in albany um no interruptions and yeah any final thoughts before we sign off Listen, I think we did pretty well. As I was telling people, we can't see each other during the uh, feed and dead air is death on any kind of, you know, broadcast. So there is a tendency to want to just continue so that you don't have that, um, uh, you don't have that dead air, but you can't see your co-host to see that he or she wants to actually add to what you're saying that, you know, so uh, if we talked over each other a couple of times, that's the reason for it. Um, but I think, I think we did pretty well. Hopefully we did pretty well. Um, uh, my final word is I just want to wish Eric, because of, I take uh, advantage of, uh, the phenomenology of today, which is the first day of the new year. It's a time for renewal. It's a time for cleansing. It's a time for forgetting all of the stupid plays you made last year. It's a time for creating resolutions, which aside from getting on the treadmill should also include, uh, a half hour, at least of study of, of Scrabble every day, if you want to be competitive. Um, so just, you know, uh, put last year behind you, learn from it, whatever you needed to learn and put it towards, um, becoming a better person in all sorts of ways, uh, to your family, to yourself, take care of yourself, especially. And I wish you nothing but a happy and healthy new year. Couldn't have said it better myself. So with that, that does it for our stream here. Thanks again to everybody who watched and participated and organized and that's it it's a great year ahead hope to see you in more streaming chats online over the board as we go through 2024 thanks everybody catch you later